do we have a quorum? I'm, I'm trying to count here and I'm not able to see everybody. We've got 41 participants, but. I don't believe so. We have at least four or five. Okay, we have a quorum. Uh, this is tech support. I just want to say that when uh, each project is called and if there are uh, speakers related to that project, uh, please raise your hand at that time so we can promote you. Thank you. Bob, have you done a, um, did you do kind of a pre-meeting roll call in terms yes. of the commissioners that we're expecting? So who are we expecting that's oh, one? I mean, I, no, I didn't. I I didn't do a roll call before the meeting. I did a roll call right now, and they're they're. The okay, I I need to. If you can send out an email just just to the commissioners and ask them to confirm whether or not they're going to join. Okay. We'll start this meeting in just one minute. It's a long agenda, uh, but I want to make sure that um, we keep our quorum. Okay, uh, Commissioner Buford just joined, looks like. And Bob, once you tell me you've started that, you've hit the send button on the email, we will get started. Okay. I wanna thank the commissioners who joined us. I know it's a long agenda and you're all very busy people. Uh, we appreciate your participation. Did we lose Commissioner Cox, Kamal? I'm checking. Uh, uh, yes, we did. And I can see that um, Commissioner Buford is away from his stream. So uh, we do not have a quorum and we will just soon as, oh, there's Commissioner Buford. All right, so we have five commissioners. We do have a quorum. Um, the department has reached out to the rest of the commission to uh, see who will be joining us. So why don't we get started officially? It is um, 1.03 p.m. Good afternoon and welcome to the August 9th, 2022 regular meeting of the Community Development Commission of Chicago. I am Gwendolyn Hatton Butler, chairwoman of the CDC and host of today's virtual meeting. I will now call to order the August 9th meeting of the Community Development Commission. On July 22nd, 2022, Governor Pritzker renewed his executive order proclaiming that all counties in the state of Illinois are in a disaster area. Section seven of the Illinois Open Meetings Act allows the CDC along with other city boards and commissions. To host virtual meetings during this COVID-19 public health emergency, provided that certain conditions are met. One of those conditions is that the chair of this commission determines that an in person meeting on the scheduled meeting date would not be practical or prudent to ensure that today's virtual meeting meets all conditions of the open meetings act. I am hereby making the determination pursuant to section 7E2 of the act that due to the COVID-19 public health emergency, an in-person meeting would not have been practical or prudent today. Therefore, in accordance with the commission's emergency rules, this meeting is being held virtually on Zoom and can be viewed live via the commission's website. A court reporter is present today to record the proceedings. 
Commissioners, you have all been designated as panelists, which allows you to control your microphone. Please remember to place your microphone on mute unless you wish to speak. If you would like to be recognized by the chair, please activate the raise your hand feature and you will be called in order. And I'm going to ask uh, the commissioners that are on, if you have to step away, could you please uh, raise your hand and let me know. Uh, we are operating on a very tight um, number here today for voting purposes. And I wanna make sure that everyone is available when we call items uh, for a vote. The agenda for today's meeting was posted on August 5th, both online at the CDC's website and physically in City Hall. I will now begin the meeting with the call of the roll. Commissioners, when your name is called, please turn your microphone on, respond by saying present, and please let me know that you can hear me. Vice Chair Newsom. Present, and I can hear you. Secretary Wheat. Commissioner Buford. Here, and I can hear you. Commissioner Cepeda. Commissioner Chan McKibben. Commissioner Cox. Commissioner Curtis. Commissioner Davis. Commissioner Gomez. Commissioner Griggs. Here, and I can hear you. This Thank you. Commissioner Thomas. Here, and I can hear you. Commissioner Trevino. Present, and I can hear you. Thank you. And Chairwoman is present. We have a quorum. The first item on our agenda requests approval of the minutes from our previous meeting held on July 12th, 2022. The commissioners have had an opportunity to review the minutes. And if there are no corrections, I'm looking for a motion to approve. So moved, <laughs> Commissioner Thomas. Thank you, Commissioner Thomas. Do I have a second? Second, Commissioner Newsom. Thank you, Commissioner Newsom. In accordance with the Open Meetings Act, all votes are to be conducted by roll call so that each member's vote on each issue can be identified and recorded. Commissioners, if you were not in attendance during the July 12th meeting, please abstain from this vote. Vice Chair Newsom. Yes. Secretary Wheat. Secretary Buford. Yes. Commissioner Cepeda. Commissioner Chan McKibben. Commissioner Cox. Commissioner Curtis. Commissioner Davis. Commissioner Gomez. Abstain. Commissioner Griggs. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Excuse me, Commissioner Trevino. Abstain. Uh, Chairwoman Butler votes yes. Chris Chan McKibben just joined. Great. Um, we, uh, Commissioner Chan McKibben, we are um, voting on approval of the July 12th meeting. Do you approve of those meet minute, meeting minutes? Yes. Yes, Great. I do approve. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. The motion passes. <coughs> Excuse me. The public was given an opportunity to provide written comments up to 24 hours prior to the start of this meeting through the CDC email address, cdc at cityofchicago.org. There were no written comments in the CDC mailbox for today's meeting. The CDC's emergency rules allow for members of the public wishing to comment on an agenda item to do so by registering in advance the CDC's mailbox up to 24 hours before the start of today's meeting. There were no individuals who signed up in advance to speak at today's meeting. Following each of today's staff presentations, the chair will also call upon members of the public who have joined us for this virtual meeting who have used the raise your hand feature to be recognized by the chair. However, due to the capacity limitations of the available technology, a limit of 15 members of the public may be called upon by the chair to speak and will be limited to three minutes per agenda item. Uh, Kamal, has anyone signed up to speak? Uh, has any member of the public signed up to speak at the beginning of the meeting? Uh, not that I'm aware of chairwoman. Okay. Uh, also, Chairwoman, uh, Commissioner Cox and Commissioner Griggs are under attendee, uh, but I'm unable to promote them. Just want to let you know. Well, um, okay. I, so, I'll keep trying. Yeah. 
Well, why don't uh, you ask them to log out and then log back in? Perhaps yeah, you, you might be able to promote them to panelists if they restart. Yes, Jim. I All right, and thank you for letting me know that they are in the meeting. And it's important that we get Commissioner Cox in for the next uh, new business item. At the request of Commissioner Cox, we will be changing the order of today's agenda to hear agenda items D and E first. So again, please refer to agenda item D as our first item and then item E as our second item. And when we are done with those two, we will then go back to the agenda's regular order. For item E and new business, excuse me, for item D and new business. The um, Chairman, I'm sorry. I, I gave you bad information. The, the items that commissioner wanted to go through were E and F, both with Mike Penisnack. On the, uh, on the agenda that you sent to the commissioners about an hour before this meeting, the Michaels, Agenda, uh, Michael's items are D as in David, E as in Edward. Is that okay. correct or incorrect? That's correct. Let's, let's go with that. Are we sure? I, the agenda I have in front of me has those two items as E and F. Okay, can I ask members of the uh, commission to confirm that the Roseland Michigan Avenue redevelopment yes. project area or at nine is item D on the agendas that you're looking at? Yes. Right. Okay. No, he has to restart. Okay. If, Bob, could you go on mute, please? Okay. Uh, there, there was an agenda sent out to the commission shortly before this meeting. The Roseland Michigan Avenue redevelopment project area, ward nine is item D as in David? Yes. The Roseland Michigan Avenue TIF redevelopment project area ward nine is item E is in Edward. Yes. Okay, so we're gonna go with that for purposes of this process today and um, we'll clean up if there's any uh, change we have to make to the agenda that was posted to the public, we will have the department work on that. For item D in new business, the Department of Planning and Development is requesting authority to advertise issue a request for proposals for the purchase and redevelopment of properties located at 11210 through 19 South Michigan Avenue, 11200 through 11232 South Edbrook Avenue, 1500 through 1552 South Michigan Avenue, 25 East, excuse me, 25 through 47 East 115th Street, and 11331 through 11341 South Michigan Avenue in the Roseland. Michigan Avenue Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project Area. Michael Penisak will present the staff report for the Department of Planning and Development. Michael, you may begin your presentation. Thank you and uh, good afternoon, uh, Chairwoman, members of the committee. On behalf of DPD, I am uh, Michael Penisnack. I would like to confirm that everyone can see the cover slide for my presentation. Yes, we can see your cover slide. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, today I'm here um, for the, a request for acquisition authority and a request for authorization to issue a request for proposals. Uh, the subject properties are located on the Invest Southwest Michigan Avenue corridor in the Roseland Michigan Avenue TIF district. They are located in the ninth ward. Two are in Roseland and one is in uh, West Pullman. All of the proposed RFP sites are included in sub area D of the Roseland Michigan Avenue redevelopment project area. Uh, that sub area calls for, that sub area corresponds to the uh, Michigan Avenue and West Southwest corridor. 
uh, and calls to be redeveloped as a mixed use commercial core for the project area. The area surrounding uh, the three sites has seen substantial uh, investment. The area surrounding uh, them include the, the Pullman National Monument Visitor Center, the Pullman uh, Industrial Park, uh, both guided by Alderman Beal. In addition, CDOT is currently working with the community uh, on a streetscape designed for both uh, Michigan Avenue and 111th Street. Uh, the Department of Planning is finishing a comprehensive plan for the Roseland Community Medical District. Uh, upon passage by the uh, Medical District Commission, uh, the state will be allocating $25 million uh, for redevelopment activity in the medical district. Uh, the largest upcoming investment is the $3.6 billion red line extension, uh, which will bring the red line from 95th Street to 130th. Uh, and result in a new station near uh, RFP site three, which in your report is called the Michigan Station uh, RFP site. Uh, the proposed RFP will provide an opportunity to build on these investments and bring more residential and commercial options to the area. The CTA is currently seeking funding from the Federal Transit Authority to extend the red line with four new stations at 103rd, 111th, Michigan, and 130th. The 111th station and Michigan Avenue station will serve the RFP sites. Uh, with approval of the funding, construction is anticipated to begin in 2025 with service uh, running in 2029. As part of that funding process, the CTA and DPD have been working on a transit supportive development plan that will provide a framework uh, for equitable transit-oriented development at the new station sites. Uh, this process has included significant community engagement. Uh, some of the flyers are included in this slideshow uh, for reference. Uh, the potential community reviewed and commented on different iterations of development scenarios at each site, including the 115th Michigan site. Uh, in late 2020, early 2021, uh, DPD took uh, its own community engagement as part of Invest Southwest to discuss potential uh, RFP sites on Michigan Avenue. Uh, over a number of meetings, uh, the community uh, gave us uh, the three sites that are in your presentation, uh, including the Gately People Store site, Michigan Station, and the Roseland Theater Building. So uh, the three sites, again, just uh, for reference, uh, one of the properties uh, involves a request for acquisition authority. This is the Roseland Theater Building. Uh, the Roseland Theater Building is an orange rated building and is one of the buildings uh, called out by the TIF plan uh, explicitly to be uh, restored and adaptively reused. Uh, the front retail space of the building was last occupied in 2015 and its second floor last occupied in 2016. Uh, the building owner, uh, Candace Professional Inc. is a willing seller. I spoke uh, with him uh, yesterday on the phone. So, and this acquisition authority is again being sought as for the purposes of the RFP. So uh, the RFPs were a collaborative effort with pro bono partners from the Chicago Central Area Committee, including Smith Group, Sterling Bay, uh, SB Friedman and SCB. Uh, this is a multi-site uh, RFP, much like Englewood. The RFP does not mandate that a respondent will respond to all three sites. Each site presents a unique opportunity that fits within the sub area D uh, plan uh, for RFP site number one. We're soliciting a mixed use development on Michigan with single family homes along Edbrook uh, for site number two, the Roseland Theater. We're soliciting a commercial only development uh, with adaptive reuse of the theater. And for RFP site number three, the city is soliciting a mixed use development that complements the future uh, Red Line station. For illustrative purposes only, uh, our pro bono partners did uh, create some images uh, for us uh, to help de guide developers uh, during their responses to the RFP. 
uh, site number two. You can see the city owned land immediately south of the theater as being reused as outdoor space. And then uh, site number three, we've worked with uh, the CTA uh, on this uh, perspective design. So um, DPD uh, recommends uh, respectfully that the Community Development Commission uh, approve the request for acquisition authority for property at 11331 South Michigan Avenue. And uh, we recommend that the Community Development Commission approve the request to issue and advertise a request for proposals for uh, these properties. Um, thank you uh, for your time. Thank you, Michael. I believe that uh, Alderman Anthony Beal from Ward 9 is present. And Alderman Beal, if you are on with us. Yes, I am. Yes, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. I'd like to give you an opportunity to, to speak regarding um, the uh, department's recommendation. All right, well, um, well, first let me just say that uh, I appreciate the department and all the commissioners taking the time to hear. Um, we've, it's taken us a long time to, to get to this point. Um, we've been trying to work diligently with the department on some middle ground to um, enable to move forward with projects that the uh, department is deemed as high priority, as well as uh, projects in outside of this district uh, in my ward that are of high priority to the community. Uh, the, the department added 115th Street, which was not originally on uh, the plan, um, and that has been the priority for the community for a long time, which is 115th Street. That has been underdeveloped and underpromised, uh, or overpromised for, for um, a very long time. And so, um, you know, I support um, this acquisition authority, and I also support the RFP, uh, but I do have one question for the department is that um, you know, back in 1998, 99, we passed an acquisition map and I think we already had authority. Uh, did we need to redo that authority for this particular property or was it not on the list? Um, so Alderman Beal, I do not uh, recall this opportunity being uh, on that list. Um, so this is why we're uh, at CDC okay. to get the approval authority for this specific okay. property. Okay. Also, can I, sorry, can I make a comment to help you out, Alderman? Sure. Oh, okay, I, I'm sorry. sorry, I'm sorry. Could members of the department please um, introduce themselves prior to making your remarks? Sure, sorry, my name is Ryan Slattery. I'm a project manager with DPD. Uh, Alderman, the acquisition lists are only good for three years when they're created. So since it was created in uh, 1998 or 1997, uh, it would no longer be allowed to be really used. So that's the reason why they have to come out for the acquisition, so. Got it. Okay. okay. Thank, Sorry, you. thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. And so, um, like I say, moving forward, um, I've, I've had extensive conversations with the commissioner who, um, you know, asked for a letter of support from me. And I granted that letter of support just yesterday in return for a letter of support for a project that is a high priority for the community, um, a letter of support from the, the commissioner for a hundred room hotel that is uh, ready to go. And, um, you know, we are looking to move forward with that as well. And so we found some middle ground and uh, I appreciate you all and I appreciate the commissioner for listening to my community as we move forward. Thank you. Alderman Bill, thank you so much for joining us and thank you for your remarks. And we appreciate your support of the department's recommendation. I'd like to ask the commissioners if you have any questions for the department. If you do, please raise your hand. Okay, um, Commissioner Gomez. Hi, I, and so this might not necessarily be at this point, but I always have a concern on who does the actual compliance of the participation from the workforce and business diversity perspective. I just, I get a lot of feedback from the small diverse business community that outreach efforts are really last minute and that's always just the concern about these projects up front. There's a commitment of the 
standard 26 and 6, 50% workforce. Who checks that it happens and do we ever get a report back on the outcomes? Thank you, Commissioner Gomez, for your question. I'm going to ask um, if there's a member of the Department of, of Planning and Development that would like to respond to the Commissioner's question. Uh, uh, sure, this is uh, Tim Jeffries, Deputy Commissioner in the Department of Planning. Um, we have a monitoring compliance group that sits within the Financial Incentives Division, which I am the deputy of. Uh, that group, um, in conjunction with the Department of Housing's Construction Compliance Group, monitors every single RTA that we have to ensure compliance. If it's not, it's put into default. Um, you know, typically non-compliance with MBE, WBE um, results in the termination entirely of the of the redevelopment agreement itself, meaning that no city funds would flow into the project. Um, that group is, I, I take every opportunity I can to, to brag about that group because in the 10 years that they've been in existence, they've saved the city about $100 million in, in total funds. So it's a it's a very robust group that, that very quietly does the exact work that you're talking about, not just on construction compliance, but also long-term, um, you know, doing what they say they're going to do um, with commitments to jobs, commitments to operations, things like that. Thanks, Tim. Just a follow up, if I can, Chair. Uh, can yes. we? Is there a way that we can get um, a summary report on progress for some of these? As a, I don't know, for information on how they're doing. It just, I feel like we never know. We go, they go into deep hold, and we don't, we don't know if they actually fulfilled that goal. And one other thing I will note that I know it's not really helpful is I know the, the prime or the GC or the developer sends out a letter to this list of assist agencies and it does never it doesn't have a contact info other than perhaps maybe it, they're the office administrative assistant or an attorney that isn't returning calls believe me i tried a few times so that's another piece of information that i think is missing from that letter like it should list or identify who the project manager is for that on on the side of the construction team, because otherwise, how are small minority businesses supposed to get a hold of them? So can we, what what needs to happen to for that to happen? Uh, on, the, on the first question. Um, I'm sorry, like, Tim, I know that's you speaking. I need for you to identify yourself. Sure, Tim Jeffries, again, Deputy Commissioner, DPD. Um, on the first part of the question, um, I'm, I'm happy to if there's any specific project you're interested in, just uh, I would say, just please let me know. Um, generally, we post um, construction compliance reports when projects are completed. When we issue the CMC, it's a requirement that that they get their construction compliance close out, and we post all of those on the city's website, on the, the, the typically the tip portal. But I am happy to provide you if any any specific projects you're interested in. On the on the, the second question, um, I, I, we're we're willing to make any changes that, that, that people think are good ideas to the letter itself. Um, so um, I guess I would say we should just continue to discuss and, it, and we're, at, we're open to making whatever improvements need to be made to those letters to, to make sure that, the, that they are a meaningful touch point and not just sort of a, a checkbox. Thank you. Chair, may I send those to you or who should I send the suggestions to? Um, Commissioner Gomez, I'm happy to serve as the point person um, on any and all questions that you have for the department. Uh, and I just so that you know, I, I speak with the department a week or so before each meeting. And so if there are specific questions that you want to make sure are addressed, um, or if you need follow up on any items, uh, and this is for any of the commissioners, please send them to me and I will make sure I cover them in my monthly meetings with the, with the department. Excellent, thank you. You're welcome. Do other members of the commission have questions? Okay, uh, Bob, do I need to ask, I don't see this here, uh, but do I need to ask if there are any members of the public that would like to make a comment or question? Uh, only if they have a, a, a hand raised. So, okay. Kamal, is there anybody that is on the meeting? Uh, there are no hands raised. Okay. Great. Thank you. So now I will call the item for a vote. Commissioners, in the resolution before us, the Department of Planning and Development 
is requesting the authority to advertise and issue a request for proposals for the purchase and redevelopment of properties located at 11201 through 11219 South Michigan Avenue, 11200 through 11232 South at Brook Avenue, 1500 through 1552 South Michigan Avenue, 25 through 47 East 115th Street and 11331 through 11341 South Michigan Avenue in the Roseland Michigan Avenue Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project area. Do I have a motion? So move, Madam Chair. Commissioner Newsom. Second. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair Newsom. And I believe that Commissioner Thomas second. Yes. Well, thank you. I would now call the item for a vote. Please signify your vote on approval of the motion by saying yes, no, or abstain. Secretary Wheat. Commissioner Buford. Yes. Commissioner Cepeda. Commissioner Chan McKibben. Yes. Commissioner Cox. Commissioner Curtis. Commissioner Davis. Commissioner Gomez. Yes. Commissioner Griggs. Yes. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Trevino. Yes. Vice Chair Newsom. Yes. And Chair Butler votes yes. The motion passes. For our next item of new business, again, this is listed as item E on the agenda we received this morning. The Department of Planning and Development is requesting authority to acquire the property located at 11331 South Michigan Avenue in the Roseland Michigan Avenue Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project area. Michael Penisak will again provide the staff report for the Department of Planning. Is Michael on? Yes, Michael uh, is still on. Um, so the staff, this presentation uh, had been given um, with the idea that I would present both items and then they would be voted on as appropriate. Um, so the presentation uh, that was seen earlier. If you could just pull it up for purposes of- Of course, yes. Right. No, I Thank you. Any specific comments you'd like to make regarding the acquisition authority that you're requesting? Um, I believe uh, I covered everything in my staff report, um, the uh, first presentation. However, I'm more than happy to take any additional questions that anyone may have. Great. And I see that Alderman Beal is still with us, I believe. Um, so Alderman Beal, if you have any additional comments you'd like to make regarding the specific request for acquisition authority. Right. No, I uh, concur with Michael. Um, you know, our comments kind of wrapped up both items on the agenda, uh, rolled up into one. So um, I issued a letter of support for this as well, uh, with the agreement that uh, you know I get the commissioner's full support for a hundred room hotel in my ward. So looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Beal. Appreciate you staying with us for this agenda item. Uh, Commissioner Thomas has raised her hand. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair. I just wanted to see the site, the uh, 11331 South Michigan site. Again, that's in the presentation. I think he flew by it. Is that, is that the site? Uh, yes, and a closer uh, image of the building is uh, here. Okay. Uh, is this the site where um, occupation, the last occupation on the second floor was uh, 2016? Yes. That, Michael, that, that could you introduce site. yourself for purposes of? Oh, I apologize. Uh, Michael Penisnack, Department of Planning and Development. 
Uh, yes, this is the building that the second floor was last occupied, 2016. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you. Are there any additional questions from the commission? Kamal, do we have any hands raised from members of the public? I, I believe that um, a member of the department, Ryan Slattery, raised his hand. Sorry, I apologize. That was an accident. Okay. There, there are no other Sorry, hands raised. All right, thank you. Okay, um, so now I will call the item for a vote. Commissioners, the resolution before us requests that the CDC provide its approval for the Department of Planning and Development to acquire the property located at 11331 South Michigan Avenue in the Roseland Michigan Avenue Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project area. Do I have a motion? So moved, Commissioner Thomas. Thank you, Commissioner Thomas. Do I have a second? Second, Commissioner Newsom. Thank you, Commissioner Newsom. I will now call the item for a vote. Please signify your vote on approval of the motion by saying yes, no, or, or abstain. Secretary Wheat. Commissioner Buford. Yes. Commissioner Cepeda. Commissioner Chan McKibben. Yes. Commissioner Cox. Commissioner Curtis. Commissioner Davis. Commissioner Gomez. Yes. Commissioner Griggs. Yes. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Trevino. Yes. Vice Chair Newsom. Yes. And Chair Butler votes yes. The motion passes. Chair Butler, this is Commissioner Davis. I have been on and then I had to get off because I was having troubles, but I heard the whole presentation and I vote yes. Thank you so much, Commissioner Davis. Thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so we will, uh, uh, um, Kamal, do we have any commissioners who have not been promoted as panelists? Uh, no, Chairwoman. Uh, Commissioner Cox has been having some audio issues. I, I emailed him that he can call me or give him some suggestion, but I don't see him. Okay, thank you. So uh, commissioners, we will now go back to our regular order of today's agenda and begin with item A. For item A of new business, the Department of Planning and Development is requesting that the CDC accept for approval a modification to the CDC's current rules regarding the negotiated sale process and to accept the Department of Planning's proposed modification to the procedures for the negotiated sale process. Assistant Commissioner Chris Yang will explain the purpose for DPD's requested change to the CDC rules. Prior to this meeting, the commissioners received the proposed wording change to the CDC rules. I'll turn it over to Chris for his presentation. Thank you, um, Chairman. Kamal, can I share my screen? You should be good now. Does everybody see my screen? Yes. Yes, we can see it. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, Chairman, Chairman Butler and Commissioners. For the record, my name is Chris Jang, Assistant Commissioner with the Department of Planning and Development. I'm here to present a proposed text change to the current CDC rules that was amended in January of 2014. DPD is proposing to amend the negotiated sale subsection from page 13 of the current land sales and acquisition authority section of the CDC rules to allow DPD and DOH an option to publish public notice of proposed sales and request for alternative redevelopment proposals earlier in the process. As you can see, the proposed changes will provide DPD an option to complete the 30-day public notice period prior to CDC presentation. If approved, this change will allow us to complete the public notice period and allow us to present the proposed sale to CDC, Chicago Plan Commission, and on to Chicago City 
council process in a more timely manner. That concludes my presentation. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Chris. Do the commissioners have any questions regarding the proposed change? Kamal, I don't see any hands raised from the members of the commission. Is that correct? We have one hand raised, John Paul Jones. John Paul Jones is not a member of the commission, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, sorry. I thought you said pu uh, public speaker. No, I said members of the commission. I just no. need to confirm before I go to members of the public. Uh, no, no, no commissioners. Okay, great. So um, a member of the public, John Paul Jones has raised his hand. Thank you for joining us. Uh, you have three minutes for your remarks. Yes, thank you so much. My name is John Paul Jones and with Sustainable Inglewood Initiatives, also a consultant with uh, Grow Greater Inglewood. Um, we are so excited and pleased with this uh, amendment to the um, land negotiation. Um, for a number of years, it's been um, uh, a much reviewed matter in Inglewood area as we go through various different developers who have had, had interest in Inglewood Mall um, and the Hosta Corridor. And so there was always a process where the land negotiation conversation uh, uh, prematurely advanced while the community was still communicating and trying to develop their own level of partnerships and collaboration with um, developers. Uh, this process allows us to now uh, work more closely at, at a, through the CDC to make sure that there's some local agreement before anything goes before the city council. Um, much, much more public financing is being uh, recommended by developers nowadays in, um, in districts, particularly like Inglewood, that is uh, short on uh, public support through our TIP districts, through our open land funds and a host of other items. And so um, there's a rush to find ways to, uh, how we best we can use these public dollars. Um, but in the meantime, we have to find ways to and take time out to leverage relationships uh, with developers and also consider different uh, ways in which they can better embrace plans approved by the city council, much like the standard, like the sustainable Chicago, like the Green Neighborhood Initiative Program, two programs that we played a very big role in, in introducing. And so I'm um, pleased about this amendment and it will allow time for us to, uh, again, think through ways to which we can have a, a improved relationship with developers and, and ensure um, broader benefits for the public. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Jones. I'm gonna ask uh, for if individuals are not speaking to please put the, place their phones on mute. Are there any other members of the public that would like to make comment? There are no other hands raised, Jim. Great, thank you so much, Kamal. I will now call the item for a vote. In the resolution before us, the Department of Planning and Development is requesting that the CDC accept for approval a modification to the CDC's current rules regarding the negotiated sale process and to accept the Department of Planning's proposed modification to the procedures for the negotiated sales process. Do I have a motion? So move, Madam Chair. Commissioner Newsom. Thank you, Vice Chair Newsom. Do I have a second? Second, Gomez. Thank you, Commissioner Gomez. I will now call the roll. In accordance with the Open Meetings Act, all votes are to be conducted by roll call so that each member's vote on each issue can be identified and recorded. Please signify your vote on approval of the motion by saying yes, no, or or abstain. Secretary Wheat, Commissioner Buford. Yes. Commissioner Cepeda, Commissioner Chan McKibben. Yes. Commissioner Cox, Commissioner Curtis, Commissioner Davis. Yes. Commissioner Gomez. Yes. Commissioner Griggs. Yes. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Trevino. Yes. Vice Chair Newsom. Yes. Chair Butler votes yes. The motion passes. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. For our next item of new business, which 
is item B on the agenda published this morning. The Department of Planning and Development is requesting that the CDC, except for its review, the amended redevelopment plan for the proposed Pulaski Industrial Corridor Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project Area Amendment Number Three, and to set dates for a public meeting of the Joint Review Board and for a public meeting. As the details of the proposed amendment to the TIF redevelopment plan will be thoroughly discussed at the requested public hearing, there will be no presentation at this time. I will now call the item to a vote. The resolution before us requests that the CDC accepts for its review the amendment redevelopment plan, amendment number three, for the proposed Pulaski Industrial Corridor Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project Area and authority to set dates for a public meeting of the Joint Re Review Board and for a public hearing. Do I have a motion? I move, Madam Chair. Thank you, Vice Chair Newsom. Do I have a second? Second. Was second that Thomas? Uh, thank you, uh, Commissioner Thomas. I will now call the roll. In accordance with the Open Meetings Act, all votes are to be conducted by roll call so that each member's vote on each issue can be identified and recorded. Please signify your vote on approval of the motion by saying yes, no, or abstain. Vice Chair Newsom. Yes. Secretary Wheat, Commissioner Buford. Yes. Commissioner Cepeda, Commissioner Chan McKibben. Yes. Commissioner Cox, Commissioner Curtis, Commissioner Davis. Yes. Commissioner Gomez. Yes. Commissioner Griggs. Yes. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Trevino. Yes. Chair Butler votes yes, the motion passes. For our next item of new business, the Department of Planning and Development is requesting authority to prepare a feasibility study for the proposed red line extension, tax increment financing redevelopment project area, and call a vote of the CDC members to accept the feasibility study and redevelopment plan for its review, and set dates for a public meeting of the Joint Review Board and a public hearing. As the details of the feasibility study and the TIF redevelopment plan will be thoroughly discussed at the requested public meeting of the Joint Review Board and at the public hearing, there will be no presentation by the department at this time. Commissioners, the resolution, uh, before I call the item for a vote, uh, Al Alderman Pat Dow has raised her hand. Thank you, Alderman Dow. Thank you, Chairman Butler. Good to see you again. And thank you to the uh, members of the Community Development Commission. Although I know you're not taking formal action here today, I wanted to uh, be an early, make an early statement about uh, the red line transit TIF. Um, and <clears throat> so I please accept my remarks. So the extension of the CTA red line is long overdue. It's an overdue project that will have a tremendous impact on connecting communities that have been marginalized by past public transit policy decisions. Reliving, relieving the transit desert on the south side, on the far south side, will connect residents with potential employment opportunities and allow for a faster commute into the loop. The CTA red line extension is important and necessary to help provide more equitable transportation options for the far south, south side Chicago residents and really for all residents across the city of Chicago. However, after taking all of those factors into consideration, I have strong misgivings about the creation of a transit tip that will take my constituents' property tax obligations and apply them miles away. That proposed use of funds does not align with the purpose of a TIF and will create a burden on the contributing property taxpayer without any direct benefit. I'm also concerned with the potential precedent being set 
that will allow geographically unconnected projects to be funded just by simply rating well-capitalized TIFs. When I was first briefed about the possible creation of the Red Line Extension Transit TIF, I kept an open mind and did my due diligence on the project. The more I analyzed the proposal, studied its impact on my community, and talked with my city council colleagues about their experience with the transit TIF, the more I realized that this was a bad deal for my residents. I was looking forward to working with the CTA and other city leaders on modifying the project so that it meets the needs of all communities. However, with um, this conversation um, has not taken place, and I am therefore expressing here today my strong reservations about this TIF. Not only would the transit TIF hamstring development and infrastructure improvements in the near South Bronzeville and Gap neighborhoods, but it wouldn't improve CTA accessibility or functionality for the areas of the third ward paying into the TIF. A better option for my residents is to keep TIF funds raised by the community in the community to address neighborhood centric issues. That's what's happening with the transit TIF on the north side. Neighborhoods up and down the line are getting the benefit of those improvements through improved CTA service capacity and reliability. For the south side, that's not the case. There are many other funding sources that could be put in place to achieve the long sought after goal of extending the red line south of 95th Street. Those options are not included in the current proposal. And I think those options should be further exam examined and evaluated. So I just wanted to uh, leave this statement here with you guys um, today, just to let you know um, some early thinking um, I look forward to an opportunity to express these thoughts again at a public meeting. And I'm sure my constituents uh, would welcome the opportunity to be a part of the discussion as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alderman Dow, for your remarks. Um, I believe, I know we have representatives from the department on uh, today's virtual meeting, and I do see someone, at least one person from the C CTA that's on um, the meeting as well. So I'm hopeful that um, the concerns that you've raised here that now the commission has had a chance to hear uh, will be um, addressed uh, you know, prior to um, the, the public hearing. So appreciate your um, really taking time out of your very busy schedule to join us today. Um, recognizing that this is not the public hearing, but you know it, it's great that your voice has been heard. I think it will help shape the deliberations along the way prior to the public hearing. So I appreciate you joining us. Uh, I believe that Alderman Beal is with us and has raised his hands. Yes, I have. Thank you, Commissioner. <clears throat> uh, I too wanted to chime in on this uh, potential TIF. Uh, you know, I was a long-standing chairman of the Committee on Transportation and Public Way uh, here in the city of Chicago. And I was, uh, and still am, the biggest advocate in the city of Chicago for the red line extension. Um, I was uh, chairman when we did the red line upgrade in anticipation for the red line extension. And, uh, you know, that is exactly why we, you know, did the red line um, upgrade first in preparation for the extension. And so when we did the upgrade, there was no TIF. There was no cost, additional cost to the taxpayers of the city of Chicago. And as we went through all the planning steps that were in place by the federal government to get us to the point to where we are today for the red line extension, there was never, ever any talk about a TIF to fund this particular project. And so I, I do appreciate Alderman Dow uh, chiming in on this as much as I would love to have her constituents money come to the far south side. Uh, but I, I just think this is a bad precedent and a bad use of TIF. And I think it is very short sighted uh, that we are looking to shortcut and not, uh, you know, we were, we're letting the federal government off the hook with funding 
this red line extension. From day one, we always said that it was gonna be the federal government and the state of Illinois that would fund the red line extension. Now, sometimes I do understand that the city has to put some skin in the game, but this is more than a skin, than skin. This is an arm and a leg that the city of uh, Chicago is looking to put in for this particular project. And so again, I was a longstanding chairman of uh, the Department of Transportation, the Committee on Transportation and Public Way, and all the briefings and all the meetings I've ever been in, there was never any talk of a TIF to fund this particular project. So as we move forward, I think you all really need to take a very hard look at this and how it's being funded. And I think we need to just roll up our sleeves, send a delegation to Washington, a delegation to Springfield, and bring back some money so the people of the city of Chicago would not have to bear the, bur the, the brunt of paying for this red line extension. And so again, this is a very dear project to me. Uh, I remember uh, when I was a kid, when it was first promised to our community, and we're talking, we're going back to um, Mayor Jay Daly. And um, you know, this is a promise that's going back 30, 40 years. And so it is time that we get it, get it right. But I think the funding source is short-sighted and I think we need to take another look at it. So thank you for listening. And I appreciate you all uh, taking a hard look at this. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Thiel. Uh, um, you know, we greatly appreciate you and Alderman Dow taking time out of your busy schedules to, you know, stay with us uh, to share with us your thoughts on this particular um, item on the agenda. You know, as the uh, resolution before us, um, you know, points out, you know, we're not taking any action on approving a TIF. Um, today, uh, we're simply uh, accepting, uh, preparing for a feasibility study and redevelopment plan and setting the dates for the public hearing. I know that um, at least one representative from the CTA is on with us today, I can tell from the uh, participant list. And I do know that a number of uh, members of the Department of Planning and Development are on uh, today with us and have heard um, the comments of you know, Alderman Deal and Alderman Dow. And I would hope that on behalf of the commission, their comments are incorporated within the work that the commission and the CTA are uh, doing uh, in conjunction with preparing for the recommendation that will come uh, before the CDC um, in a month or two. So um, I don't believe there are any other aldermen on um, the line with us, but I do, uh, I know I have several commissioners that have raised their hand. Um, and so I'm going to call on, um, let me see here. I'm sorry, uh, Commissioner Trevino uh, and, then, and then Commissioner uh, Davis. And I would ask uh, if Alderman Dow can stay on and Alderman uh, Beal can stay on uh, because the commissioners may have questions for you um, at this time. Yeah, I, I understand this is more to vote on the feasibility study, but my question was more around um, the TIF funds for this project. Um, my understanding is that there will be federal money allocated for this project, but they're looking for these TIF funds to match federal. So I don't know if maybe this needs to be addressed down the line and just focus right now on the feasibility study approval or if it's relevant to, sorry about that, or if it's relevant to kind of talk about this now. So I, I'm not sure it's appropriate for us to talk about it now because we're not um, the matter before us. We don't, you know, none of the members of the commission have had an opportunity to review any information regarding the proposed structure. But what I will ask is that the uh, CTA representative and the uh, members of the uh, Department of Planning and Development who are on the line, take your question uh, into consideration and so that it can be directly addressed, um, you know, during the, the, the public hearing or the process of preparing for the public hearing. Do you have other questions you would like to see addressed, Commissioner Trevino? No, that's it for me, thank you. Right, thank you. Commissioner Davis? Thank you. Um, so I wanna just first say um, to Alderman um, Dowd and uh, Alderman Bill, Thank you so much because I've been on the commission for a long time. And this is one of the few times I can say that I have seen um, Alderman come on the very front end of what was 
going to be an issue down the line to really flag it, to really try to talk about it and be on to talk about it. It's just very helpful for somebody like me from the perspective of wanting to get in front of it before we are down the line. My, my, my question really is, and it's probably a little premature too, but my concern is, and I've seen this before um, a little bit, where we, we're not really um, voting on it, we're, we're just discussing it, but it's first the feasibility, then it's the next step, then it's the next step, and then we're voting. And so uh, my question really is, when do we, and when is it the appropriate time to step back and say, hmm, now that we have some real concern about it from um, you know, aldermen who have, have, have voiced what I think is, is you know, absolutely um, valid concern, how do we um, kind of stop where we are and revisit whether, even, whether we even wanna go forward in any meaningful way at this point with anything? Um, because my concern is that this is the first step in the next step that leads to the next step. And so um, that's a convoluted way of saying, how do we really pay service to um, concerns that the rest of us may have um, considering what has been raised to today? Uh, thank you, Commissioner Davis. Uh, what, what I would say in terms of um, the, the commission's input in this process is that we're at the very beginning of this process. As I mentioned in my response to Commissioner Trevino, nothing has been presented to the CDC yet. So it's difficult for the commission to make specific observations or comments regarding uh, a structure that has not uh, been presented to the commission. Uh, and part of the uh, process leading up to the public hearing uh, that will take place will be the preparation of uh, the, a, a feasibility study and redevelopment plan, which um, I'm very, uh, as a member of the commission, I'm very happy that um, Alderman Beal and Alderman Dow have joined us today uh, because oftentimes, as you are aware, Commissioner Davis, in this process, as you so artfully pointed out, there are concerns, but the commission are, is not made aware of them uh, prior to the actual preparation of the feasibility study and redevelopment plan. So, you know, this way uh, we're in a position where, you know, we can definitely make sure that uh, the concerns that are raised in this form are addressed by the uh, proposals that are um, ultimately given to uh, this commission for our review and approval. Okay, I guess I just wanna just, just to, to clarify a bit. Um, and, and how will we ensure that that happens? Because the next step will be, if we vote today for a feasibility study, the next step will be the feasibility study, which will be moving it forward with TIF dollars. So I guess I'm just trying to make sure that we, uh, even in saying, okay, to a feasibility study, it seems as though that's almost like saying, okay, we are on board with moving this ball forward. I'm wondering if this is the moment where we say that we don't even want that before all of the concerns that have first been addressed, have first been raised are addressed. And so this is really just a matter of protocol that I'm just not Clear sure. On. I'm, I'm just looking for some clarity. So uh, as a matter of protocol, uh, the, the department has not asked us to allocate TIF dollars to this project today. Right. And so um, the commission will have an opportunity if the commission so chooses to uh, express its view on the allocation or the use of TIF financing um, on any level. Uh, for this project when, when a proposal is made by the department and the CTA when it's put to a vote. So uh, I, I believe that um, as part of our process, the commission will uh, be able to vote very directly on the use of TIF for this particular project. That's not what, what we're being asked to do today. Uh, we're being asked to you know, approve the preparation of a feasibility study What's helpful, uh, I believe, for the department and for the CTA is to hear the concerns that are being raised today 
in conjunction with the resolution before us. And um, I would expect that the department and the CTA will take into consideration uh, the concerns that were raised today as they are you know, putting together and doing the work uh, for in preparation of the public hearing and the ultimate vote on the allocation of any TIF financing for this or any project. Thank you. Thank you, um, Commissioner Chan McKibben and then Commissioner Thomas. Yeah, I uh, thank you, first of all, um, Alderman Woman Dow and Alderman Bill for uh, your presentations. I have similar concerns about um, everything from the public engagement process to you know um, the process of TIF approval. I know that there were public engagement sessions scheduled the past couple of weeks, but I know that residents were um, were notified by mail and the uh, meetings were online, which made it difficult for folks that are techno technologically challenged and they're, um, as far as I know, um, I've, uh, language access was also an issue. I know folks in Chinatown that would have wanted to participate ended up not participating because they didn't know what interpretation services were available to them. Um, so I would really um, ask if there would be another, some other process, um, more robust process for of public engagement, especially with respect to the TIF uh, before uh, moving forward. Okay, is there anyone from the Department of Planning and Development or the CTA that would like to uh, address the public engagement part of this process? I can address that, Chairwoman Butler. Oh, I'm sorry, who is speaking? Could you introduce yourself? Absolutely, this is Leah Mooney. I'm the Director of Strategic Planning and Policy at CTA. Um, CTA hosted a public meeting on July 21st. Um, we hosted it as a hybrid meeting. It was available both in person, um, uh, accessible to the Red Line and other transit at the Cindy Pritzker Auditorium at the Harold Washington Library. It was also available via Zoom. We had um, Cantonese and Mandarin offered um, and that was made clear in the mailing as well. Um, we'd be happy to offer um, additional engagement opportunities for people that felt that that was inadequate, but we did um, make every effort to be as available as possible for that meeting. Um, we got good turnout for the meeting um, and a number of comments, both from people who were in the redevelopment project area for the transit tip, as well as in the project footprint. Um, so I'd be happy to talk more and at a future point, but I don't wanna go on too long. So Lee, just a, a question for, uh, for you. Um, thank you for uh, offering up uh, additional, additional engagement sessions. Uh, how would uh, someone go about requesting that uh, of the CTA? I think it would be good to communicate um, through you to uh, Tim Jeffries and DPD about what specifically is being requested so we can think about what is most um, feasible for the people that felt that they did not get a chance to voice their concern. Um, and I think it was interesting that if you, um, and I can make sure this is available in the translated version as well, but the, um, the actual um, presentation that we gave provided some content to people that they spoke about in multiple comments that they understood the, tr the tip differently after they had heard that presentation. So it might be good as a starting point to make sure we can get that translated version um, in whichever language was desired and make sure that that person has access or the, the individuals have access to that as a starting place. Okay, uh, Commissioner Chan McKibben, so um, given uh, the remarks from Ms. Mooney of the, um, of the CTA, are you satisfied uh, with, with that? Do you, would you like to uh, ask uh, Tim Jeffries of the Department of Planning and Development to come back uh, with specific um, response regarding future engagement? 
Um, yeah, let me think about whether what would make the most sense for future engagement, possibly, you know, more than in another session. Um, I I know that I know folks that received the mailing, but maybe they didn't understand. I think the mailing was only in English. So um, so it could pos it could be that they didn't know what else was available. Okay, well, I want to make sure that your uh, concerns are addressed. So could you, you know, please just copy me on any um, correspondence with yep. the department so we can make sure that it's it's followed up. And just another question for um, the CTA representative. Are there other engagement um, sessions that have been scheduled? We um, have, as, as you, I think, were outlining, Madam Chairwoman, we have a joint review board meeting and the hearing where comments can be. Um, made, but um, I know for the red purple modernization phase one transit TIF, there were parts of the um, TIF area that were outside the project footprint. And similarly, we had um, at least one community meeting at a church um, to address, um, you know, the, the interests and engagement of that group. There, um, I think there's a lot of similarity here with that, um, so we can follow the lead from that um, RPM phase one transit TIF that was uh, executed in 2016 that also had um, areas that were outside the project footprint, but were inside the TIF and, and kind of see what was done for that to follow that precedent. Would that be helpful, Commissioner Chan McKibben? I'm not sure if she can hear me. It looks like she might be frozen. Um, okay. Well, thank you, uh, you know, Lee, for your remarks, and uh, we'll we'll follow up with with you and and Tim on on next steps. So I um, so Commissioner Thomas, you've been patiently waiting. Thank you so yes. much. Um, thank you, uh, Madam Chairman. I have um, a few questions, but the first one is. Um, we received um, a document entitled RLD, RLE CDC Introduction Package. Um, and in that package, we have a document that's about 60 pages long called the Red Line Extension Redevelopment Project Area. Um, is that the feasibility study? Would a member of the department like to respond? Sure is Ryan Slayer with DPD. So that is the um, the feasibility study and the redevelopment plan that we're presenting to you today. So you're accepting for it, Madam Chairman. Right. So the the um, we the resolution that I was given is to prepare a feasibility study and redevelopment plan. Are you saying that's already been done? It's to accept to and ratify. Uh, that's not what, um, Bob, do you want to clarify what, what you've sent to the, to me and to the commission? Ryan, what's, what's on this item here is uh, requesting authority to prepare a feasibility study for the proposed red line extension. Um, call a vote to the, of the CDC members to accept the feasibility study and set dates for a public for its meeting. review. So for its review. For its review. So it's a request authority to authorize and ratify a feasibility study, except for review the eligibility report and redevelopment plan for the proposed red line extension, RLE tax and criminal financing and redevelopment project area, and set the dates for the public meeting of the joint review board and then the public hearing that would be set on October 11th. Madam Chairman? Yes. So um, it sounds to me like we're ratifying a study that probably does not con uh, have consideration of the alderman's con uh, concerns and then some of the commissioner's questions and then even um, consideration of other um, financial sources, source options as part of the study. Yeah, that is correct. And that's my understanding. I mean, there's a disconnect between what uh, we have been told that we are being asked to approve and the part and the department's expectations for today. Um, but before we take 
any action or no action. I do have uh, others that have raised their hand. Um, we have a Tim Jeff Jeffries from the department. And then I believe there's one or two members of the public that have also raised their hand. Uh, hi, yes, the Tim Jeffries, deputy commissioner. Uh, I'll just clarify that this is um, that the, the redevelop or the, the feasibility plan you have before you discusses the sort of the, the criteria to designate a TIF district writ large under the, the requirements of the TIF Act. Those are um, a legal framework that says that, you know, that the, out, that the outline or that the requirements that are in place in the, in the TIF Act are being met in this area. They are. Um, and that the funding mechanism specifically is, it doesn't really intersect with this document. Uh, that could and would be advanced at a later date um, if, if this moves forward. Um, and so the funding structure is like the actual disbursement of funds. This, this, is the, this is the vehicle that allows for that, but this does not dictate how funds will specifically be dispersed to a future project. So um, any comments about the, or any concerns about the, um, how funds would or would not be deployed, um, you know, the rate of federal versus local could, could still be, you know, are still up for discussion. Um, and this, this really, this action today is to set the date so that we can talk about it in the future. I mean, this is uh, pursuant to the, again, to the Illinois TIF Act. And I think it's in, in, in pursuit of transparency that so that, <laughs> put this document on file so that the public at large and, and this body, in fact, um, have an opportunity to, to look at it, digest it because it is big and dense, and then in the future, have an opportunity to discuss it at length um, with a more informed discussion, having a look at that document. Madam Chairman? Yes. Are we ratifying the feasibility study today? That's not the language that I have in front of me that we're ratifying it, that we are, uh, the language I have in front of us is that the department is preparing a feasibility study um, and that we are accepting the feasibility study and redevelopment, redevelopment plan for our review, not ratification. So that is the, that is the resolution. Okay, I see, uh, let me, uh, I have several participants uh, in the public that have raised their hand. Kamal, can you help me out with the- uh, Chairwoman, there's one, uh, Liam Mooney, uh, under panelist. Pardon? One, Leah Mooney, the person named Leah. Oh, okay, so, so Leah Mooney is from the CTA. Yeah, she, she had her ring, hand raised. Okay, and so, so there's no, I see a Dolores Lucas and a Dr. Briggs. Um, right, all right. So uh, Ms. Mooney, I'll get back to you in just a moment, but I do want to, the members of the public have been patiently waiting. So I will um, call on you after they've had their three minutes to speak. So um, uh, Dolores Lucas, thank you for joining us. And um, please, the floor is yours and you have three minutes to make your remarks. Thank you for having me. Um, I did not intend to speak at all in this uh, meeting. It's uh, one of the first that I've attended. I wanted to learn more about what the Department of Planning was doing. And I had received the um, minutes that we were to discuss the red line extension to 130th Street. I'm a resident of the Golden Gate community and the red line extension would be a benefit to the community. And that's why I tuned in. I am a bit puzzled that we are going back and forth about the TIF, um, the, the transit TIF. It's new to me. Uh, I'm still learning about it and need to know more. I really don't know what the CTA has presented to you and what you're trying to review, but it does indeed sound like we need to address this issue at another date. And that's basically uh, what I wanted to say. If the red line extension to 130th did get a transit TIF that would pay for some of the expansion, that would be a benefit. I don't know where all the other funding is coming from, but we are are and will continually look for funding to fund that large project. And if anyone else is on here from 
the um, CTA, please let the um, participants on this call know, have we completed a feasibility study? Have we completed the any other studies so that they will be updated on exactly where we are with the red line extension. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lucas for, or Ms. Lucas for joining us. We have Dr. Briggs on. You can, uh, you have three minutes for your remarks. Yes, um, thank you very much. Um, and I uh, thank you to our distinguished colleagues and so on for um, bringing up this study. So first of all, I have about three things I need to have clarification on. The feasibility study, I thought that was already done. Um, it seems like that's what they've been talking about for the past two years is the feasibility study. Um, I wanna know if that was done and because I have talked to people that have been through this feasibility study, they have, um, they, they have um, talked about the planning of it and where it's, the, it's gonna go and, and so on. Uh, my second question is, where is the TIF money coming from? Now, I understand that this could come from downtown or could come from the north side and so on, but where exactly is this TIF money coming from? And the third item is, what are we going, where are we going after this feasibility study? Are we going to be stuck in this feasibility study for the next five years? Or is this something that we're going to get out of the way right quick and move on to the actual building of this red line extension? How long is it going to take us? What do we, um, where do we go from here, from this feasibility study? And I thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Briggs, for joining us today and for your remarks. Uh, I believe that um, Leah Mooney from the CTA would like to make remarks. Thank you, um, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, Ms. Lucas and Dr. Briggs, it's great to hear from you and your wonderful project supporters. So thank you for being here. Um, in terms of uh, Dr. Briggs' question though about the um, feasibility study, I think the difference is that we're talking just about feasibility for the transit TIF, which is actually in this case kind of a narrow analysis to look at whether it fits under the requirements of the state enabling legislation and if it meets those requirements. Um, and I think for the, um, you know, I think for the, the longer term process that you've been part of, we did advance that significantly. And I'm happy to talk about that at another time when it's appropriate, but um, I can follow up with both of you offline about where we are with the analysis of the TIF. And then earlier I had sort of raised my hand when we were talking about the redevelopment plan just to clarify. And I think Tim did a nice job. So sorry for repeating you, Tim. But um, you know, we were required to file the plan ahead of this meeting so that everybody would have access to it. And it wasn't because we've um, finished the process, it's because we're starting it and have done that analysis for your consideration. So uh, I'm looking forward to helping to clarify any pieces of this that are um, confusing or in question as we go forward. But I just, I wanted to clarify those two points. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Alderman Dow. Yes, uh, she did not, uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. She did not uh, answer Dr. Briggs' question about where the TIF money was coming from. They're basically coming from the 42nd Ward, the 4th Ward, the 3rd Ward, and the 11th Ward. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Dow. Um, Ms. Lucas, I see you have your hand raised. However, uh, we're limited to just one comment uh, from you. So um, I apologize uh, that, that I'm not able to, to circle back to you as part of this, this questioning and comment process. Are there other questions or comments from the department? Uh, this, this is Tim Jeffries. Um, I, I would just reiterate that this is 
um, you know, we are asking for the authorization and ratification of this feasibility study and redevelopment plan, but I would just like to re-emphasize that it's, it's, it's the ratification of this current draft of it. Um, it is still subject to change, including based on comments that were made today and, and at the eventual public hearing, and that those comments can and, and should be incorporated. Um, but we do need to have that public hearing in order to get to the place where we can, um, you know, do our full public presentation on this and, and, and make sure that we're getting community input as well. So Tim, I, I, I hear your comments, but I have to tell you that the uh, resolution that I've been given does not use the term ratification. Um, <laughs> so, and, and the resolution has come from the department. Uh, uh, Commissioner Thomas. Well, actually, I think Tim kind of pointed to what I was saying that um, Ms. Mooney said plan and Tim said study, and I'm not sure which, which one this is. Is it a study or a plan? The feasibility study is what we're supposed to be reviewing, accepting and reviewing. Um, if we are to ratify a feasibility study, which I believe we maybe have, then I'm, I'm not ready to do that today. Uh, the document that you have should- oh, Excuse me, the... Pam, just one moment, please. Sure. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Thomas, for your remarks. Uh, is there other unreadiness on behalf of members of the commission? Yeah. Uh, Dr. Briggs, I see that you've raised your hand, uh, but you know, under the terms of this uh, public engagement, I unfortunately I cannot circle back to you after your uh, initial remarks. Um, Commissioner Davis, I was just going to say yes. I think there is still some unreadiness on my part, uh, especially since <clears throat> what we're doing now is something different, even than what we thought we were doing. And so, um, to hear that these things can be considered at some later time. Um, um, it just does, it doesn't um, bode well to me that these are the questions that we have and the concerns. Why can't they be considered uh, at this time before we move forward in any other way? And so um, that would be my un unreadiness for this at this point. Now that they've gotten this feedback, we've had these discussions. Um, why can't we uh, have these co this conversation on the front end um, before we move forward, even with the next phase? Thank you, um, Commissioner Davis. Um, Commissioner Trevino. I mean, Commissioner Gomez, sorry. Sure. Uh, I was just going to say, is there a way to, um, to hold this for uh, the next meeting and then perhaps get debrief? I don't know if it's a debriefing or maybe I'm just not following correctly. It seems pretty confusing um, so that we're all on the same page with the same information for the next one just so that we're, I don't want to vote on something where I'm not, not sure exactly what the, I'm voting on. Um, you echo the chair's confusion <laughs> between what, what's been presented to me as a resolution and, and what the department has said today on, on as part of its comments during this meeting. So um, that, that definitely needs to be reconciled. We do have a member of the public that has raised of their hand that has not spoken. So Kamal, can you uh, allow uh, Deborah Truss to speak, please? And uh, uh, Ms. Truss, you have three minutes. I just have a quick question for Alderman McDowell. Could you repeat those wards where the TIF funding will be generated from, please? Yes, Ms. Truss, yeah. uh, the, the, the most, money will be um, coming from the 42nd ward, followed by the third ward, the fourth ward, and the 11th ward. Thank you, that's all I need. Thank you. Okay, so the, the challenge that we have here as commission is that the, uh, you know, looking at the agenda that was sent to us this morning, it uses the terms um, authorize and ratify a feasibility study and accept for review the eligibility, uh, eligibility report and redevelopment plan. 
However, that and to set the dates for a public meeting of the joint review board and a public hearing. The resolution uh, that I've been given as chair is to prepare a feasibility study and redevelopment plan and for the CDC to accept the feasibility study and redevelopment plan for its review and set the dates for a, a public meeting in the joint review board and for a public hearing. Um, is there a member of the law department that's on, on that can advise the commission as to how we should proceed at this point? I've been on the commission since 2015 or 2016. This is the first time I've encountered this discrepancy. I think uh, Commissioner Davis joined with me at the same time and this is, th and this is a major discrepancy. So I, I need uh, law department advice as to how to move forward on this. Um, uh, this is Tim Jeffries, Deputy Commissioner and DPD. Uh, I'm not sure about your parliamentary procedure, but I, I would say that if you could just, if, if you could, Temporarily hold on a second, get someone from the law department to join and, and, and weigh in on this issue for you. Uh, that would be very helpful. We're going to hold this item for a vote uh, rather than um, and get clarification as to how to proceed rather than um, calling the item for a vote and having it voted down by the commission, uh, which is where I think, uh, you know, is, is a possibility based on the number of commissioners who have expressed unreadiness at this point based on the comments that have been made. So uh, we will hold that and move on to um, any further consideration or vote on this item and move to the proposed industrial conservation area TIF redevelopment project area amendment two, which on the agenda that we were sent this morning is item C as in Charlie. For our next item of new business, the Department of Planning and Development is requesting that the CDC accept for its review the amended redevelopment plan for the proposed Kinsey Industrial Conservation Area Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project Area Amendment Number 2 and to set dates for a public hearing of the Joint Review Board and for a public hearing. As the details of the proposed amendment to the Kinsey Industrial Conservation Area TIF Redevelopment Plan will be thoroughly discussed at the requested public hearing. And as there will also be an opportunity to ask questions about the amended redevelopment plan during the public hearing, there will be no presentation at this time. Although there, there might be questions at this time on what's being um, requested of the commission. So I will ask commissioners, do you have any questions regarding um, the, the review, uh, the resolution that we except for its review, the amendment redevelopment plan for the proposed Kinsey Industrial Conservation Area Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project Area Amendment Number Two. Okay, there, are, there are no questions from the commission. Uh, Kamal, do I have any uh, members of the public that would like to that have raised their hand to make comments. I don't see any hands raised, Jim. Okay. I will now call the item for a vote. Commissioners, the resolution before us requests that the CDC accept for review the amended redevelopment plan for the proposed Kinsey Industrial Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project Area, Amendment Number Two, and to set dates for a public meeting of the Joint Review Board and for a public hearing. Do I have a motion? So move. Thomas. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Thomas. Do I have a second? Second, Grace Chan McKibben. Thank you, Commissioner Chan McKibben. I will now call the item for a vote. Please signify your vote on approval of the motion by saying yes, no, or abstain. Vice Chair Newsom? Yes. Secretary Wheat. Sec Commissioner Bu Buford? Yes. Commissioner Cepeda. Commissioner Chan McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Cox? Commissioner Curtis? Commissioner Davis? Yes. Commissioner Gomez? Yes. Commissioner Griggs? Yes. Commissioner Thomas? Yes. 
Commissioner Trevino? Yes. And Chair Butler votes yes. The motion passes. So for our next item of new business, the Department of Planning and Development is requesting authority to negotiate a redevelopment agreement with CERC Esteem for redevelopment of property located at 4730 North Sheridan Road in the Lawrence Broadway Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project area. Emmett Morrissey will provide the staff report for this item. Thank you, Emmett. Thank you, Commissioner. Sure. Chairperson, um, hello, for the record, my name is Emmett Morrissey, a financial planning analyst with the Department of Planning and Development. I'm here today to request your approval to name Circustine as a developer for the project at 4730 North Sheridan Road. I'm also seeking approval to enter into a redevelopment agreement with a developer of Circustine. Um, with me today is Dan Roberts, the executive director for Circustine. The project is located at 4730 North Sheridan Road in the Uptown community area and in the 46th Ward. Alderman Kaplan is supportive of the project along with Alderman Osterman. Uh, the project is located in the Lawrence Broadway TIF district. Uh, this slide shows a neighborhood context view of the subject property. This slide shows the subject pin outlined in red. The total site size is approximately 15,000 square feet. Uh, the project aims to revitalize the building's character and original purpose as an entertainment venue. Uh, renovations of the building will transform the building into a more welcoming space for pedestrians, audience, staff, and most importantly, the students of Circustine. Uh, the scope of the project includes interior renovation, repairing the facade and the roof, and renewing the original character of the building that will create larger windows on the front of the building um, and return the original entrance of the building to the Lakeside Theater. Uh, the new layout will consolidate youth programming functions on the first floor and administration functions on the second floor. Uh, the total TIF amount for this transaction is approximately 4.2 million and the total cost of the renovation is approximately 8.4 million. Uh, this slide shows the current site condition of the subject property. Uh, the, the building was originally constructed in 1914 and opened as a movie going theater uh, called Lakeside Theater. And the theater operated until 1966. Um, this is one of the remaining theater buildings in the Uptown. The building sits on the eastern end of Uptown Square Historical District, and it's listed on the National Registry of Historic Places. This slide shows the elevations of the building um, upon completion. As you can see, they're trying to transform the building to the original condition of the exterior. Uh, this slide shows the sources and uses for the planned development. The Department of Planning and Development supports this incentive because it will expand the capacity for circusing to increase programming for the students from a minimum of 18 hours per week to 40 hours per week. Uh, the upgrades will help serve more than 250 youths in the first year. The total investment for the proposed development is approximately 8.45 million. The redevelopment agreement is required. That includes 26% MBE and 6% WB participation in the hard construction costs. Additionally, the department supports this incentive because it will return the site and make it more historic to return it to the historical standards. Uh, city protections in the redevelopment include um, TIF disbursements upon completion or TIF escrow, depending on how the developer chooses. There will be ongoing operation covenants to guarantee that the additional students will be served. Um, there will be a restriction on the flip that the developer will not be able to sell the property within a reasonable amount of time. And there will be MBE and WB prevailing wages and city residency requirements for the development. Um, this concludes my presentation. I thank you for your favorable consideration of this request. I'm joined by the applicant and we are happy to answer any questions the committee may have. 
Thank you. Thank you uh, very much, Emmett. Um, is Alderman Kappelman or someone from his office present? If there are, if you could raise your hand if you'd like to make a statement. Emmett, do you know if anyone from the Alderman's office is planning on joining us? I am not aware, but the Alderman is strongly supportive of this project. Okay, great, thank you. Um, Commissioners, do you have any questions for DPD? Okay, uh, there are no questions from the commission at this time. There is a member of the public that has raised their hand, Cleveland Tucker. Kamal, if you can unmute. Cleveland Tucker and allow them three minutes to speak. Cleveland Tucker, please unmute yourself. There you go. Good afternoon. Uh, <coughs> I'm going to waver my statement. I raised my hand to comment on the last uh, discussion we were having. And I guess I'm not technically savvy because it just appeared for this. So I'll just waver my question at this time. All right, well, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Tucker, for joining us this afternoon. Are there other questions from members of the public, Kamal? No other hands raised. Okay, and I don't see any hands raised by members of the commission. Just checking the screen to make sure. So I will call now call this item for a vote. Commissioners, the resolution before us requests authority for the Department of Planning and Development to negotiate a redevelopment agreement with Cirque Esteem for redevelopment of the property located at 4730 North Sheridan Road in the Lawrence Broadway Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project area and to recommend to the City Council of the City of Chicago the designation of Cirque Esteem Company as developer. Do I have a motion? Gomez motions. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Gomez. Do I have a second? Second, Grace Chan McKibben. Thank you, Commissioner Chan McKibben. I will now call the vote. Please signify your vote on approval of the motion by saying yes, no, or abstain. Vice Chair Newsom. Yes. Secretary Weed. Commissioner Buford. Yes. Commissioner Cepeda. Commissioner Chan McKibben. Yes. Commissioner Cox, Commissioner Curtis, Commissioner Davis. Yes. Commissioner Gomez. Yes. Commissioner Griggs. Yes. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Trevino. Yes. And Chair Butler votes yes. The motion passes. For our next item of new business, the Department of Planning and Development is requesting authority to negotiate a redevelopment agreement with Chicago Market for the construction required as part of the redevelopment of the historic Gerber building located at 4620 North Broadway Avenue in the Wilson Yard Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project area and to recommend to the City Council of the City of Chicago the designation of Chicago Market as developer. Edward Solis Pablo will provide the staff report for this item. Good afternoon, Commissioner. Um, Chairwoman Butler and members of the commission. Uh, for the record, my name is Edward Solis. I am a financial planning analyst with the Department of Planning and Development, and I'm here today along with Deputy Commissioner Tim Jeffries, Assistant Commissioner Terrence Johnson, and representatives from the development team, Chicago Market Board President Matthew Rufi, uh, and supporting him are general managers, Daniel Arnett and board member, Bob Koontz. Um, as the chairwoman Butler mentioned, the resolution before you request the recommendation to the city council for the designation of Chicago Market, a community co-op as developer or certain capital improvements associated with Chicago Market and the authority for the Department of Planning and Development to negotiate a redevelopment agreement with the developer for those capital improvements. 
Um, little context about the site, uh, the project location, it is, it is located at 4620 North Broadway within the 46th Ward, Alderman James Kaplan. He is in very much so support of this project. Um, this is in the Uptown community area and it's located within the Wilson Yard TIF district and it is part of the North planning area. Um, Chicago Market, this is a unique um, incorporation. Um, it is a co-op, which is a distinct form of business, um, which is democratically run by its members, uh, also known as shareholders. Um, being a shareholder allows you to invest in an organization for form for a common benefit and receive benefits and returns based on that patronage of the business. Um, they also elect a board of directors, which handles the hiring and oversight of the Chicago market. Uh, more specifically, they were the ones responsible for hiring the general manager, and they also ad adopt bylaws. A um, little bit of the neighborhood context, the red outline it is where the Chicago market site is located, right under the tracks of the CTA red line. Uh, Wilson runs east and west, Broadway runs north and south. Here's an aerial view of the site. Um, quick project summary. The developer is proposing to complete the interior space of the historic Gerber building and use the space for a full service grocery store. And it will allow them to provide a farm to table, trans farm to table food and educate the uptown community on nutrition, ingredient sourcing, and other methods of food production. Uh, Chicago Market will be completing the work the CTA initiated in restoring and reactivating a historic vacant building that we intend to increase local mobility and bring new food choices to the uptown community area. The project's scheduled to cost roughly $11.7 million. We are here requesting a TIF ask up to $5.2 million. The project line project timeline is scheduled to begin construction at the end of quarter four of this year and should be completed within a year that coming to roughly at the end of quarter four of 2023. Um, these are the current conditions of the Gerber building. Um, as you guys can tell, there is, it's just a vacant space in a lot of need of a lot of capital improvements. Um, here's a sources and tab, sources and uses for the project. Uh, the developer will be providing roughly $2 million in equity, about 4.5 million in lender financing, and the TIF ask of $5.2 million, with the uses being mostly hard costs of $8.1 million and soft costs of $3.5 million. Um, the department and the developer has done significant due diligence on the feasibility of this project. There have been two market studies that have been conducted. Store masters has been hired as design and building, uh, in charge of the design and the building. Um, and they have also consulted with Firebrand and Retail Planet that have experience with food grocery stores. Um, and also their general manager, Dan Arnett, uh, has 20 plus years of co-op management experience. Here are some renderings as to why we are here today. This is what we believe the project will look like. And given it's a historic context, the outside will remain mostly untouched. Um, okay. So to end my presentation today, um, DPD has thoroughly reviewed this proposed project, the qualifications of the development team and the financial structure uh, and the need for public assistance. DPD recommends that the Community Development Commission recommend to the City Council the designation of Chicago Market as developer for the redevelopment of the historic Gerber building. This would revitalize the uptown community. It would preserve a historic building and bring food access to the uptown and surrounding communities. This project will also create roughly 71 full-time equivalent jobs, increase the tax revenue, and have a pretty large local economic impact. Um, also, DPD also requests that the commission provide DPD the authority to negotiate, execute, and deliver on the city's behalf a redevelopment agreement for the for Chicago market for the capital improvements. Thank you, and I welcome any questions you may have. Thank you so much, Edward.
Uh, do you know if uh, Alderman Kappelman is present? He is uh, not. Okay, is there anyone from his team? I don't believe so. Or, like to speak? Okay, thank you. Commissioners, do you have any questions for the planning department for DPD? Commissioner Thomas. Thank you, Chairman. Um, just looking at the sources and uses, I just wanna confirm that um, the developer also owns the property currently. No, the developer does not own the property. They will be, they signed a lease with the CTA. The CTA is the owner of this property. And will continue to be the owner. Correct. Is it a, is it a long-term ground lease or? It is a 20 year lease. Commissioner Thomas, do you have additional questions or comments? Um, no, I was just thinking about the amount of investment uh, the city is putting into the, into the building on the 20 year lease and the extensions on that lease. I cannot speak on that. Um, we do have representatives of development team. If they would be willing to speak, please raise your hand and I believe someone can unmute them. Matthew Rufi, I think has his hand raised. Yes, he does. Kamal, can you unmute? I, I'm able to unmute myself. I just didn't want to okay, speak out of order. <laughs> Thank you, please uh, introduce yourself and, uh, and proceed. Thank you, Chairwoman Butler and, and uh, Chairwoman Thomas. Uh, Matthew Rufi, I'm the board president for Chicago Market, a community co-op. Um, yes, we do have extensions. We have 10-year extension options on that. Um, and we do anticipate that this is a long-term home for us. Um, being a co-op, one of those ties is back to community and a care for community. So when we're building here, we're building not just a store, but we're building a, a part of what we feel will be an anchor store and helping Uptown to you know, increase their uh, fantastic in, you know, footprint in Chicago. So thank you. Thank you for the question. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you. So I have a follow-up question for Mr. Rufi, and this came up, uh, his, this has come up in other projects. Uh, if you could, if the department could put the uh, sources and uses back up on the screen. Uh, could you just speak to the source of your equity? And this is yes, yes, Mr. Chairwoman. Uh, again, Matthew Rufi, Chicago Market. Um, from an equity standpoint, some of that equity comes from um, what Edward had spoken about before with ownership. Um, so ownership does actually, you know, bring in capital and then has uh, they, they hold shares because of that. So some of that comes from. Um, the ownership, some comes from investment that came from owners and outside sources uh, from a few different sources, one being owner loans, one being preferred share purchases, and some uh, donations as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Vice Chair Newsom. Madam Chair, I'm glad we have the developer on the line. My question is, as it always is with the uh, rehabilitated uh, landmark designated buildings. My concern is accessibility. Is that being addressed? Thank you for the question. Uh, let's do some uh, Matthew Rufi again from Chicago Market. Um, yes, as a part of the overall plans, um, we have a number of different ways in which we're addressing accessibility um, from everything from the, the width of our aisles that we will have in there um, through to uh, the installation of an elevator, um, which would allow for access to the lower, the lower floor or into the basement um, and, and access both from the street. So there'll be two entrances, one on Broadway and then one there is a parking lot uh, behind us. And, and in both of those um, you know, entrances is like this, we'll have uh, ability to be accessed by, um, by anyone. That is certainly a core tenant of what we want to build um, and I'm making sure that all are welcome, no matter what that reason is, uh, is, is a part of what we're building into the overall designs. Thank you for the question. Thank you. And Commissioner Newsom, Edward Solis here for the record, a financial planning analyst with DPD. Uh, they will also have 44 parking spaces in this site. And obviously, given its proximity to the red line, they would also have access to the purple, purple line and the red line. Thank you. Thank you. Vice Chair Newsom, additional questions or comments? That is it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Do any other 
any other members of the commission have questions or comments? Kamal, are there any members of the public that have raised their hand? Chair Roman, I don't see any hands raised. Uh, there are two uh, phone call dialers and they can press star nine on their phone if they wish to uh, raise their hand in Zoom. Star nine raises your hand. I don't see any hand raised so far. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Well, I will now call for a vote. Commissioners, the resolution before us requests authority for the Department of Planning and Development who is requesting authority to, to negotiate a redevelopment agreement with Chicago market for the construction required as part of the redevelopment of the historic Gerber building located at 4620 North Broadway Avenue in the Wilson Yard Tax Increment Finance and Redevelopment Project area and to recommend to the City Council of the City of Chicago the designation of Chicago market as developer. Do I have a motion? So move, Madam Chair. Thank you, Vice Chair Newsom. Do I have a second? Second, Thomas. Thank you, Commissioner Thomas. I will now <laughs> call the vote. Please signify your vote on approval of the motion by saying yes, no, or abstain. Vice Chair Newsom. Yes. Secretary Wheat. Commissioner Buford. Yes. Commissioner Cepeda. Commissioner Chan McKibben. Yes. Commissioner Cox. Commissioner Curtis. Commissioner Davis. Yes. Commissioner Gomez. Yes. Commissioner Griggs. Yes. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Trevino. Yes. And Chair Butler votes yes. The motion passes. Thank you everyone for your time today. Mm -hmm. Thank you. For our next item of new business, which is indicated as Item H on the agenda that was sent to us this morning. The Department of Planning and Development is requesting authority to negotiate a redevelopment agreement with 221 East 49th Street LLC for redevelopment of the property located at 221 East 49th Street LLC in the 47th King Drive Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project area and to recommend to the City Council of the City of Chicago, the designation of 221 East 49th Street LLC as developer. William Grams will provide the staff report for this item. William, please proceed. Thank you, Chairwoman. Good afternoon, Chairwoman Butler and members of the commission. For the record, my name is William Grams with the Department of Planning and Development. With me today, I have Terrence Johnson and Tim Jeffries from DPD, as well as members of the development team. The resolution before you requests a recommendation to the City Council to designate 221 East 49th Street LLC as a developer for the rehabilitation of the former Anthony Overton School into the Overton Center of Excellence. It also requests authority for the Department of Planning and Development to negotiate a redevelopment agreement with the developer. The Overton School is located at 221 East 49th Street, which is in the Grand Boulevard community area, the 47th and King Drive TIF District and the Southeast Planning Region. The Alderman is Pat Dowell and she has provided a letter of support for the project. project will transform the former Overton School in Bronzeville into flexible office space for local entrepreneurs and nonprofits focused in the areas of change, which stands for climate, health, arts and culture, next generation, growth, and education. The total project cost is- 16 William, are you, excuse me, this is Chair Butler. Are you sharing a screen or presentation? Yeah, we're not seeing it, Billy. You're not, okay. It's a screen you're sharing your seat moment too. Yeah, isn't it? Don't I have two selected? Just move your PowerPoint over there. You have to click on the share button after selecting on the lower right side. Ah, I'm sorry. Okay. 
That is better. That would be better. <laughs> All right. On that part, okay. Are you seeing the full screen yeah. version? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, sorry about that. All right. Um, Okay, so th this project will transform the former Overton School into flexible office space for local entrepreneurs and nonprofits focused in the areas of climate, health, arts and culture, next generation, growth, and education. The total project cost is 16.83 million and it would include 5 million in city funds. Several interested tenants have already been identified for the project. The project is estimated to generate either directly or through tenants 110 permanent jobs, as well as 125 temporary construction jobs. The project timeline is estimated to be 12 to 16 months. Here's an overhead view of the neighborhood. The project site, again, is located at 221 East 49th Street, which is midway between the 47th and 51st Street Green Line stations. Here's an aerial of the site and pictures of the current condition of the building. The school was designed by Perkins and Will in 1963 and was closed in 2013. The building was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 2016. Here are elevations of the building. Most of the work for this project will be done on the interior of the building. 221 East 49th Street LLC is an entity created by Guillaume Foreman and Joe Bowden to undertake this project. They are the founders of the Washington Park Development Group, a real estate development firm with a focus on investing in and growing the south side of Chicago. The group has completed over 26 million in transactions in the Washington Park and Bronzeville neighborhoods. Guillaume is also part of the team that is using TIF funds to redevelop the Armour Building on the Illinois Institute of Technology campus. The total project cost is 16.83 million and will be financed with a mix of equity, debt, historic tax credits, new markets tax credits, a We Rise Together grant, Chicago Recovery Funds, and TIF. DPD intends to provide the developer with city assistance in an amount not to exceed $5 million. The funds will be provided from the Chicago Recovery Plan funds in area-wide increment from the 47th and King Drive TIF, TIF district, and will be paid out in two installments of $2.5 million each. The first payment will be made at the issuance of the certificate of completion and the second upon the one-year anniversary of the certificate. DPD has thoroughly reviewed the proposed project, the qualifications of the development team, and the need for public assistance. DPD recommends that the Community Development Commission approve the designation of 221 East 49th Street LLC as developer for the Overton Center of Excellence so that the project can advance to the City Council. Thank you, and I can take any of your questions. Thank you. William, does that conclude your report? Yes. Your presentation? Great. I believe, is Alderman Dow still with us? Alderman yes, Dow, I am. Would, would you, thank you would, so much. Would you care to make remarks? Yes, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak to you and the members of the Community Development Commission. Um, I wanted to just... Uh, express my strong support for this project um, and to support the cutting edge vision of the founders of uh, the creative minds in this project, Guillaume Foreman and Bowden, who have already taken a uh, surplus uh, underutilized uh, and location and have really made that uh, cops 
for I'm sorry, Chairwoman Dow. Your voice is really cutting out. I won't repeat it. I won't repeat any. Yeah. I won't repeat. I just said that this is a great project. I support it. I thank uh, uh, the Department of Planning and Development, both the staff and the leadership. I thank the mayor for the Chicago uh, Recovery Grant Program and to uh, uplift the, the strong vision and creative vision of- uh, yeah, sorry, so I'm not sure if we're able to paint. So yeah, okay. uh, I'm gonna ask everyone, if you're not speaking, if you can go on mute and thank you, Alderman Dow for your remarks. Uh, commissioners, do you have questions for DPD? If you do, please raise your hand. William, if you could uh, stop sharing your screen, I, I'd like to see the, the full commission. I can't do so. Okay, great, thank you. Are there any questions from uh, the commissioners? Uh, are there any members of the public that would, that would like to make a comment or ask questions? Uh, Kamal, is there any member of the public that I cannot see that has raised their hand to speak? Uh, no hands raised, uh, Chairwoman. Great, thank you. I will now call the item for a vote. Commissioners, in the resolution before us, the Department of Planning and Development is requesting authority to negotiate a redevelopment agreement with 221 East 49th Street, LLC for redevelopment of the property located at 221 East 49th Street, LLC in the 49th King Drive Tax Increment Finance and Redevelopment Project Area and to recommend to the City Council of the City of Chicago the designation of 221 East 49th Street LLC as developer. Do I have a motion? So move. Thank Thomas. you, Commissioner Thomas. Do I have a second? Second. second. This is Grace Chan McKibben. Thank you, Commissioner Chan McKibben. I will now call the vote. Please signify your vote on approval of the motion by saying yes, no, or abstain. Vice Chair Newsom. Yes. Secretary Wheat. Commissioner Buford. Yes. Commissioner Cepeda. Commissioner Chan McKibben. Yes. Commissioner Cox. Commissioner Curtis. Commissioner Davis. Yes. Commissioner Gomez. Kamal, is Commissioner Gomez still on the line? Uh, I don't see her. I, I think, uh, one second, Chairwoman. I will continue. Commissioner Gomez had emailed that she had to leave at 3 p.m. Okay, thank you so much. Commissioner Griggs. Yes. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Trevino. Yes. And Chair Butler votes yes, the motion, the motion passes. For our next item of new business, which is I on the agenda that was distributed to us this morning, the Department of Planning and Development is requesting authority to negotiate a redevelopment agreement with Yellow Banana LLC and affiliates for redevelopment of the properties located at 10700 South Halstead Street and the 107th Halstead TIF, 2858 East 83rd Street in the Commercial Avenue TIF, 420 South Pulaski Road in the Midwest TIF, 4439 West 63rd Street in the 63rd Pulaski TIF, 7240 South Stony Island in the 71st Stony Island TIF and 7908 South Halstead Street in the 79th Street Quarter TIF and to recommend to the City Council of the City of Chicago the designation of Yellow Banana LLC and affiliates as developer. William Grams will provide the staff report for this item. William, you may proceed when you're ready. 
I just checked. You can see my screen this time. Yes. All right. All right. Great. All right. Thank you, uh, Chairwoman Butler and members of the commission. The, re the resolution before you today requests a recommendation to the city council to designate Yellow Banana LLC as the developer for the acquisition and rehabilitation of six save a lot grocery stores. It also requests authority for the Department of Planning and Development to negotiate a redevelopment agreement with the developer. First, I'd like to start. Just, excuse me, uh, William, can I just ask everyone if you're not speaking, if you could go on mute, that would be helpful. Thank you. Please proceed. First, I'd like to start with some information about the development team and provide some context to this project. Yellow Banana is a black owned retail grocery platform that operates 38 Save-A-Lot stores in the Chicago, Milwaukee, Cleveland, Jacksonville, and Dallas metro areas. Save-A-Lot has been going through a corporate restructuring where they've been selling off stores to local entrepreneurs while serving as a wholesaler to these stores. Yellow Banana obtained the licenses for six Chicago Save-A-Lot stores in 2021. Five of these stores are currently open and operating. The six would reopen as a result of this project. The proposed TIF grant would facilitate the acquisition of the underlying real estate for these stores, as well as the rehabilitation and modernization of all six locations. Acquisition is critical to Yellow Banana's business plan as it will give them more control of their operating costs and allow them to maintain affordable prices in an inflationary environment. The total project cost for all six stores is 25.2 million. The TIF request is for $13,492,500, which makes up 53.5% of the total project cost. The project timeline is roughly nine months. The project would preserve 60 to 70 full-time jobs, create 15 to 20 new full-time jobs, and result in 100 temporary construction jobs. I will now run through all six locations and show a picture of the current condition of the story. Location number one is 10700 South Halsted Street in the 34th Ward, Alderman Austin, Morgan Park community area, 107th and Halsted TIF district, and the far south planning area. Here's a neighborhood aerial and a picture of the current location, current condition. Number two is 2858 East 83rd Street in the 7th Ward, led by Alderman Mitchell, the South Chicago community area, Commercial Avenue, TIF district, and the far south planning area. Again, here's the neighborhood context and the current store. Third location is 420 okay. South Pulaski Road in the 28th Ward under Alderman Urban in the West, Park, West Garfield Park Community Area, the Midwest TIF District, and the West Planning Area. Neighborhood okay. aerial and current condition. Fourth location is 4439 West 63rd Street in the 13th Ward under Alderman Quinn in the West Lawn Community Area, 63rd and Pulaski TIF District and Southwest Planning Area. Neighborhood context and current condition. Location five is 7240 South Stony Island Avenue, also under um, Alderman Mitchell in the seventh ward, the South Shore Community Area, 71st and Stony Island TIF District and the Southeast Planning Area. Neighborhood shot and current condition. Finally, the sixth location is 7908 South Halstead Street in the 17th Ward under Alderman Moore, the Auburn Gresham Community Area, 79th Street, Corridor TIF District, and the Southeast Planning Area. This is the only location of the six that is not currently um, open. So this is the one that would be reopened as a result of this project. Current 
So here is a prototypical uh, rendering of what the remodel design will, will look like. Um, you know, it, it will be custom for each store, but it's just a, a generic uh, facade concept. And then on the inside, a redesign as well of um, you know, the interiors, some examples, and then a typical floor plan. These stores are about 10 to 15,000 um, square feet in size. As mentioned earlier, the total budget for all six stores is 25.2 million. In addition to the city support, the capital stack includes equity, debt, and new markets tax credits. Here are the store by store uh, budgets along with the respective TIF district and the amount of allocated TIF from that district for, for the respective store. Um, is, again, the TIF district involved 107th Halstead, Commercial Avenue, Midwest, 63rd Pulaski, 71st Stony Island, and 79th Street Corridor. DPD views this proposal as a package deal to complete and operate all six stores and will be guided by a single redevelopment agreement. As such, DPD proposes to provide 75% of each store's allocated TIF amount when that particular store is completed. The remaining 25% of each store's allocated TIF will then be paid at the issuance of the final project certificate of completion for the project as a whole. DPD has thoroughly reviewed the proposed project, the qualifications of the development team, and the need for public assistance. DPD recommends that the Community Development Commission approve the designation of Yellow Banana LLC as developer for the acquisition and rehabilitation of these six Save-A-Lot grocery stores so that the project can advance to the City Council. That concludes my presentation. I can take any questions. Thank you, William. Uh, there are uh, several aldermen whose um, wards will be impacted by um, this proposed uh, redevelopment. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, um, I'd like to give the aldermen uh, in the affected wards an, an opportunity to, to speak. I don't know if Alderman Austin, Mitchell, Urban, Quinn, Moore, and I believe there is a sixth alderman as well are on the line with us or anyone from their um, teams are have joined us today. William, do you know if any aldermen have uh, joined us today and, and do we have aldermanic support for what's being proposed? I'm not sure who is on the line. Um, we do have letters of support um, from Alderman Moore um, Alderman Irvin, and we have gotten verbal support um, from two others, and um, we're, we're still working with Alderman Mitchell. And uh, could you uh, further uh, describe what still working with Alderman Mitchell, what that statement means? Tim, would you like to speak to that? Uh, yeah, hi, Tim Jeffries, Deputy Commissioner in the Financial or in the Department of Planning and Development. Uh, I think we're just working with him on um, both the sort of overall funding source and the scope of work and what is actually going to be done for the project. Um, I talked with him um, about I don't know half an hour before the this meeting today, and he was um, he. We all acknowledge that we still are working. He did want this. He had no issues with us moving this forward today um, in an effort to keep the things moving generally. Okay, thank you for that clarification of automatic support. Uh, I'd like to ask the commissioners if you have any questions for DPD on what's being proposed. Vice Chair Newsom. I'd like for William to please pull up the slide that shows the rendering of the new prototype for the building. 
I see we still have Save a Lot uh, visibly shown. Is there any, any reference to Yellow Banana as far as their trademark on any of these buildings? These will still um, all be under the Save a Lot banner. Um, the uh, the owners will ha have a little more flexibility on some of the items and you know what they provide. Uh, Save a lot of will still be the primary uh, wholesaler and supplier of products, but they, they will all be under the Save a Lot um, banner. Okay, with Yellow Banana as the owner. Correct. Vice Chair Newsom, do you have additional questions or comments? No, I don't. Are there other questions or comments from members of the commission? Kamal, are there any members of the public who have raised their hand and would like to speak regarding this proposal? Uh, there are no hands raised, Chairwoman. Uh, I also just want to mention that there is a phone number, which I think might be Commissioner Cox. Commissioner Cox, if you're on the phone, you can press star six at any time to unmute. Can we ask if that is Commissioner Cox, if he can let us know that it's him by just speaking now? Uh, if the caller uh, phone number ending in 2006, can you please unmute yourself and uh, identify yourself? Please press star six to unmute. Um, there's no response, Madam Chairwoman. Thank you. Uh, I, I'm assuming then it's not Commissioner Cox. Uh, Commissioner Trevino. Hi, yes. Um, one question. Is it pretty typical and common to have multiple stores all bundled under one agreement? Would the department like to address that question? I don't, I don't believe we've done a deal uh, like this before. Uh, but like we said, we, our, our support is kind of contingent upon all six of them uh, continuing to operate. So that's why we're structuring it in that way. Yeah, Commissioner, this, this is Terrence Johnson, Assistant Commissioner within DPD as well. Uh, we we have done within one RDA, you know, phase projects that have multiple buildings, whether it's whether it's a grocery store or industrial buildings. Um, they somewhat serve, they operate the same way. But uh, we've we've done other phase projects that have multiple multiple buildings completed within one RDA in the past. Thank you for that clarification. Commissioner Trevino, do you have additional questions or comments? I guess my follow-up question would be if there's any MBE, WBE requirements or reporting requirements, will they be collected individually and reported collectively? Or would they be all combined and reported as one? So the, the intent is that they meet um, the 26 and six requirements, all, all the general requirements for TIF um, on each store. Um, if you know, if there is a shortfall, there there would be opportunity to propose how to make it up on a subsequent store, and then you know the whole, entire project would have to be signed off at the end as collectively meeting the requirements. But the um, the aim is on a store by store basis. Um, so that they get that certificate and get the 75% funding um, along the way. Perfect, thank you. No further questions. Thank you, Commissioner. Are there other questions for members of the commission? If there are no further questions, I will call the item for a vote. Commissioners, the resolution before us requests authority for the department of development and planning, planning and development to negotiate a redevelopment agreement with Yellow Banana for locations at 10700 South Halstead Street in the 107th Halstead TIF redevelopment project area 
2858 East 83rd Street in the Commercial Avenue TIF Redevelopment Project Area, 420 South Pulaski Road in the Midwest TIF Redevelopment Project Area, 4439 West 63rd Street in the 63rd Pulaski TIF Redevelopment Project Area, 7240 South Stony Island in the 71st Stony Island TIF Redevelopment Project Area, and at 7908 South Halstead Street in the 79th Street Quarter TIF Redevelopment Project Area. Do I have a motion? So moved by Trevino. So moved. Okay, so it's been uh, moved by um, Commissioner Trevino and it's been seconded by Commissioner Chan McKibben. Is that correct? Yep. Thank you. That's William, if I could ask you to stop sharing your screen, please. Thank you. I will now call the vote. Please signify your vote on approval of the motion by saying yes, no, or abstain. Vice Chair Newsom. Yes. Secretary Wheat. Commissioner Buford. Yes. Commissioner Cepeda. Commissioner Chan McKibben. Yes. Commissioner Cox. Commissioner Curtis. Commissioner Davis. I don't believe Commissioner Davis is still with us. Commissioner Gomez. Commissioner Griggs. Commissioner Thomas. Abstain. Commissioner Trevino. Yes. And Chair Butler votes yes. Uh, let me just do the count. Bob, can you do the count with me as well? One, two, one, two three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, we've, okay, the motion passes. I know that we lost a few commissioners. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yeah, the motion motion. yeah. McKibben, Trevino. Hey, we're good. Bob. I've gone yeah. through. Thank you. For our final item of new business, the Department of Planning and Development is requesting authority. And I will say final item, but we will go back to the discussion on the red line um, extension to wrap that up for today's meeting. Um, the Department of Planning and Development is requesting authority to enter into negotiated sale with Thrive Englewood LLC and the Neighborhood Housing Services of Chicago for the disposition of property located at 914 West 63rd Street and 6231 South Sangamon Avenue in the Inglewood Mall redevelopment area, and to approve the sale of the property to Thrive Inglewood LLC and NHS, a not-for-profit corporation or an entity suitable to the department's commissioner, and to request authority for the Department of Planning and Development to negotiate a redevelopment agreement with Thrive Inglewood LLC and NHS a not-for-profit corporation or an entity suitable to the, to the department for redevelopment of the property and to recommend to the city council of the city of Chicago, the des designation of Thrive Inglewood LLC and NHS, a not-for-profit corporation or an entity suitable to the department's commissioner. Asia Bonner will provide the staff report for this item. Thank you. Great, thank you. Good afternoon, all. Let me share my screen. All right. And if you could just verbally confirm that you see the presentation version of this and not yes. personal notes. All right, great. All right, once again, good afternoon, everyone. Um, Madam Chairwoman Butler and members of the commission. For the record, my name is Asia Bonner and I am a financial planning analyst with the Department of Housing. I'm joined by my colleague, Patrick Brutus, the Southeast Region uh, uh, Neighborhood Planner for the Department of Planning and Development. Also on the call today are members of the development team from DL3 Realty. We have development manager, Andrew Stables and director of partnerships and residential investments, Tanya Kadakina. I'm here before you in connection with the proposed development of Thrive Inglewood LLC to be located in the Inglewood community area in Inglewood Mall TIF district, which is also within the 16th ward represented by Alderwoman Stephanie Coleman. 
This project will involve uh, the development of currently vacant, unimproved city owned land and the use of TIF funds. And that said, the requested actions for this proposed transaction include authority to enter into a negotiated, I'm sorry, you guys might be seeing my Zoom item too. Apologize for that. Okay. Um, so once again, the requested actions for this pro proposed transaction include authority to enter into a negotiated sale with Thrive Inglewood LLC uh, and Neighborhood Housing Services of Chicago Incorporated, a not-for-profit organization or related entity for the disposition of city-owned land located at 914 West 63rd Street and 6231 South Sangamon Avenue within the Inglewood Mall Redevelopment Project area. Secondly, to seek authority to negotiate a redevelopment agreement with the applicant, Thrive Inglewood LLC and NHS or related entity and then finally, to recommend to city council and the designation, the designation of Thrive Inglewood LLC or a related entity as developer. So. Okay. All right, now for an overview of the proposed development, Thrive Inglewood will be a mixed use, mixed income, new construction development. The six story elevator building will contain a total of 61 residential units, 51 of which will be made affordable for households at 60% AMI or below. The unit sizes range from one to three bedrooms and include two ground floor, one bedroom live work loft style units, ideal for local entrepreneurs. This amenity rich development includes several high end features such as an on site fitness room, community room, second floor roof terrace, which you can see in the rendering here, um, off site parking, uh, bike storage, laundry facilities on each floor, and several other items. Approximately 2,500 square feet of retail will occupy the eastern ground floor segment of the property and will be most suitable for fast casual dining. The building will be constructed utilizing fiber cement panels, masonry brick, metal siding and canopy floor to ceiling window wall and aluminum and glass door front systems. The orientation and massing will provide large transparent storefront windows along the ground floor to create an active building wall. Plazas are provided at the main entry and adjacent to retail and there will be substantial landscaping along Sangaman with the future construction of phase two, which will add 44 residential units with the construction of the new five-story building. Open spaces are provided to residents behind phases one and phase two buildings with landscaping and private access to tenant amenities. For additional context about the proposed site, the site consists of the two parcels highlighted in red, the northern parcel does not contain any development rights and houses an underground stormwater vault that services the broader campus. The southern edge of the southern parcel will be the site of the proposed 61 unit mixed use development with frontage along 63rd Street. Additionally, as I mentioned, a future second phase 44 unit building is contemplated with frontage along Sangamon for a combined total of 105 units. Last month, the site received approval from the Chicago Plan Commission to change the current zoning of C1-3 to a residential business plan development. And importantly, the proposal was originally the subject of a response to the Invest Southwest RFP for Inglewood back in August of 2020. The RFP called for the redevelopment of about 4.2 acres that was divided into three subsites or packages. The subject site, again highlighted here in red, represents one of the packages created in the RFP to which the developer applicant was the only respondent. Ultimately, DPD selected another package option, but continued discussions with the developer concerning the sale of the property for the development of a new construction six-story mixed income mixed use apartment rental building as we see proposed here. And so the proposal evolved and was subsequently selected in the 2021 uh, low-income housing tax credit funding round that the Department of Housing hosted as a competitive process. And they were selected as a part of that. 
This development embodies the transformative aspirations of the Invest Southwest initiative and is intended to close out the final phase of the Inglewood Square Mall development, which is immediately adjacent and began with the development of the Inglewood Mall anchored by Whole Foods and several other retail stores. The proposed development is 0.2 miles west of the Halstead Green Line CTA station and just under one mile east of the Ashland 63rd Green Line CTA station. That's also along the 63rd bus route. Therefore, this proposal development or this proposed development aligns um, strongly with the city's equitable transit oriented development principles and meaningfully leverages its proximity to transit with added density, active ground floor uses, reduced parking in the rear, secure interior bike storage and exterior bike racks um, along uh, the retail entrance and lobby entrance. All of this is for the benefit of what we know has been a historically marginalized community on the south side, just south of uh, downtown by about eight miles. So now to discuss the rental mix at Thrive Inglewood, the development will include 27 one bedrooms, 29 two bedrooms, five three bedrooms, and the majority of the units or about 40 of the units um, will be held affordable to households at 60% AMI with 11 units held affordable to households at 50% AMI. And then there will be 10 units available at market rate. Uh, the slide, and the more detailed staff report that you all received summarizes the square footage and rent rates by bedroom type and affordability tiers. And I, I'll note that the rent rates for the 50 and 60% AMIs are set by HUD. So to talk about the development team, Thrive Inglewood LLC or a related entity will be managed by DL3 Thrive Inglewood One LLC, which is 100% owned by DL3 Realty Advisors LLC. DL3 Realty is a local minority owned full service real estate development firm formed over 30 years ago with a focus on revitalizing the commercial landscape of Chicago's far south side. Nationally recognized DL3 Realty has completed over 212,000 square feet of retail, office, grocery store, and medical spaces and with the recent closing of Park Station, a city-funded mixed-income mixed-use joint venture between DL3 Realty and the Michaels organization, DL3 Realty is uh, expanding its affordable residential portfolio with Thrive Inglewood representing the firm's first sole venture in affordable housing development. And I should say that um, this is a milestone in equity and, and inclusion that the Department of Housing's recent updates to its qualified allocation plan and racial equity impact assessment sought to achieve. So this is um, something we really wanted to highlight. DL3 Realty has additionally assembled a qualified team of partnering consultants who are all well known to the city that includes the property, property management um, through uh, Realty and Mortgage Company, architectural services from Perkins and Will, legal representation from Applegate Thorne Thompson and residential services from Neighborhood Housing Services of Chicago. Again, they'll be the nonprofit partner with this group. And then the first mortgage lender will be BMO Harris Bank. Finally, consistent with the Department of Housing's policy requiring that a minimum of three bids be considered for both the general contractor and investment syndicator, at the time of submission for this briefing, the developer was still in the process of making a final selection between the bids they had received, but very, very, very recently, um, the development team has selected Enterprise as their syndicator and BOA Construction, um, a minority-owned full-service construction management and general contracting firm, as the general contractor. And once again, this is, this is a great demonstration of the goals that the city is really seeking to achieve around inclusion that are being carried out in this development team. So to talk about financing, Thrive Inglewood, which um, I should say is expected to begin construction in the first quarter of 2023 and to be completed by uh, the second quarter of 2024, has a projected total budget cost of $32,631,100 I'm sorry, $32,631,000, we'll just leave it there. 32.6 million, we'll say that, how about that? 
Um, the development will be funded with various sources of equity and public financing, um, including TIF funds. So there'll be about 5 million um, in TIF funds, which represents 15% of the capital stack. And that'll be anticipated to be paid out over three installments with two payments being funded during construction. And that's um, three total even payments, two of which will be uh, issued um, during the construction phase. In addition um, to uh, TIF dollars, there'll also be a first private mortgage of approximately 2.3 million, um, which accounts for about 7% of the costs. The city will additionally be providing approximately 10.5 million in multifamily loan funds. And then we will also be allocating 9% tax credit, which will generate roughly 13.9 million um, for the benefit of the project. The city will additionally provide Illinois housing tax credits, also known as donation tax credits, which will generate 108,000 in equity. The seller's note that you see second from the top represents the donated value of the land shown from the donation tax, shown for the, the donation tax credit purposes and derived from an appraisal of the land completed by CBRE um, earlier this summer. Other sources making up the capital stack include a $170,000 grant from ComEd, the requisite $100 general partner equity contribution, and then a $100,000 deferred development fee. And then finally, um, the project is anticipated to receive a $240,000 neighborhood opportunity uh, fund award. All right. So the developer has led an expansive effort to engage and incorporate community input. You can see the list of engagement events held dating back to late 2020. You can also see the range of organizations that have pledged their support with letters, including um, Alderman Coleman. And you can see the evolution of the proposed development informed by a collaborative iterative process of broad-based input as it's reflected in the rendering on the right, which is the most you know, recent iteration of what this project will look like versus what was submitted at application in uh, summer of last year. So finally, this is the proposed timeline between now and when um, we can cut ribbons in the second quarter of 2024, um, when construction is expected to be completed. So earlier this year in April, the project received approval for 5 million in TIF. Last month, it received PD approval from the plan commission. Uh, should the project receive approval today, it will move on to seek approval from plan commission for the land sale in September, and then will be introduced to council in the same month to be considered by finance committee in October, and hopefully will receive full passage and approval later in October from city council with a financial closing targeted for December of this year. Okay. And so with that, I thank you all for your time and consideration this afternoon. Myself, along with my colleague, Patrick Brutus and Andrew and Tanya with DLB Realty are available to take any questions. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Asia. Is uh, Alderman Stephanie Coleman from the 16th Ward, is she on today's call uh, or is anyone from her team on and would like to make a statement? Uh, good afternoon. Uh, this is Brandon Bradford. I'm uh, from the 16th Ward Service Office. Alderman is, could not make it, but she did send a letter of support and she is in full support of this uh, project. Uh, we've been working with uh, the Thrive, Thrive team and DL3 for some time now. And we believe that this is a good project to put forward um, to help fill the in-housing that we need here in Inglewood and to complete uh, the Inglewood Square Mall. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Brantford, for joining us today. And we appreciate your, your comments and the Alderman's support. Commissioners, do you have questions? If you, uh, Vice Chair Newsom. Uh, Madam Chair, I wonder if Asia can pull up the slide <clears throat> that shows the streetscape on which side the two one bedroom loft is located. Oh, sure. So that would be, oh, let's see. 
canceled. So this is not a super close up picture, but the rendering on um, the left is the most recent version. And so the lofts would be located on that ground floor um, along 63rd Street. What you're seeing is right at the corner of 63rd and Sangamon. And so mm -hmm. I believe currently those main windows right at the corner um, are a part of the fitness center. That's right. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Tanya. Yes. Um, and if you continue along um, eastward um, down the sidewalk, you would uh, see the windows for the, the live work loft units there. And and um, just for clarification purposes, you're referring to the rent after rendering April dated April seventh, twenty twenty two. That's correct. Thank you. And I can, I do have sort of floor plans as well, if you wanted to see from that version. So this is what it would look like. Okay. Fully programmed. So actually the visibility would be the work space as opposed to the living space. That's correct. I'm sorry, if you're speaking, could you introduce yourself? Uh, sorry about that. I'm Tanya Kadakia, Director of Partnerships and Residential Investments with DL3 Realty Advisors. Vice Chair Newsom, do you have additional questions or comments? I do not. Thank you. Thank you. Do other members of the commission have comments or questions? No. Kamal, do we have any members of the public that have raised their hand to speak? Uh, no, Chairwoman. No one. Thank you. I would now call the item for a vote. Commissioners, the resolution before us requests authority for the Department of Planning and Development to enter into a negotiated sale agreement with Thrive Inglewood LLC and Neighborhood, Neighborhood Housing Services of Chicago, otherwise known, otherwise known as NHS, for the disposition of property located at 914 West 63rd Street and 6231 South Sangamon Avenue in the Englewood Mall redevelopment area, and to approve the sale of the property to Thrive Englewood LLC and NHS, a not-for-profit corporation or an entity suitable to the department's commissioner, and to request authority for the Department of Planning and Development to negotiate a redevelopment agreement with Thrive Inglewood LLC and NHS, a not-for-profit corporation or an entity suitable to the department's commissioner for redevelopment of the property, and to recommend to the city council of the city of Chicago the designation of Thrive Inglewood LLC and NHS, a not-for-profit corporation or an entity suitable to the department's commissioner. Do I have a motion? So moved, Thomas. Thank you, Commissioner Thomas. Do I have a second? Second, Grace Chan McKibben. Thank you, Commissioner Chan McKibben. Please signify your vote on approval of the motion by saying yes, no, or abstain. Vice Chair Newsom. Yes. Secretary Wheat. Commissioner Buford. Yes. Commissioner Cepeda. Commissioner Chan McKibben. Yes. Commissioner Cox. Commissioner Curtis. Commissioner Davis, Commissioner Gomez, Commissioner Griggs, Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Trevino. Yes. And Chair Butler votes yes. The motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioners. Thank you so much. You're quite welcome. Thank you. So we're going to go back to uh, item B on the agenda, uh, the proposed red line extension, the redevelopment project. Um, as I indicated earlier, I was given a resolution that is in conflict with the um, with the agenda that was published. Um, at least the agenda is in conflict with the agenda that was sent to us this morning. Uh, uh, Commissioner Buford, I, I was told um, by another member of the commission that you were attempting to make a comment as we were uh, discussing this item. So I wanna circle back to you to make sure that I, I acknowledge you and give you an opportunity to um, you know, make any comments you would like to make at this time. Well, I think my questions were answered uh, pretty much along the lines of the concerns of the others. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, and once again, I apologize for not giving you the opportunity to speak uh, during um, the discussion. Uh, so we, I, I've received several uh, messages from the commission and also received an uh, email from the um, department regarding my request to um, speak to um, have someone from the law department advise the commission on where we are uh, given the comments that we've made. And I think it's fair to say that I, I'm sensing a, a general level of um, unreadiness on behalf of the commissioners to move forward uh, with a vote on this item. Am I overstating uh, the, uh, where the commission is at this point in terms of moving forward today with a vote? So I've also specifically uh, given um, the um, document that was given to the commission for our review, which is 121 pages, and we got that sometime on Friday afternoon. Uh, some commissioners, uh, based on the time it was, was sent, did not have an opportunity to thoroughly review the, um, the document that was sent to us. I'm hesitant to call it a study, given all the comments that were made today. Uh, so um, if it pleases the commission, uh, members of the commission, um, I would suggest that we defer this item for further discussion and a vote to our September meeting uh, to give one the commissioners an opportunity to, um, and, and uh, Tim Jeffries, I see you've raised your hand and I'm going to call on you in just a moment. Uh, but let me just finish my thought here. I, I think the commissioners have asked uh, that the department uh, give the commissioners time to really delve into the document that we were provided for our review. Uh, I think there's a general unread unreadiness to ratify the document at this point. Um, so um, I, that's my suggestion is that we um, defer a formal vote on uh, the um, this agenda item until our September meeting. So uh, I'm going to call on Commissioner Chan McKibben, who's raised her hand, um, and any other members of the commission who would like to speak. And then I will, uh, Alderman Dahl has patiently stayed with us. I'm going to um, allow her to speak, and then I will uh, turn to, to the department for their comments. Commissioner Chan McKibben. Um, and uh, this kind of speaks to my own unreadiness to vote because I need to understand um, the TIF as well as the whole proposal some more. I think earlier Alderman Dow had said that the TIF um, money would come from the 42nd Ward and 3rd, 4th and 11th. But I believe that the document that was shared for this meeting actually had more wards involved. Um, so I just for myself would like to understand more. Um, let me see if I can pull that up. Um, it is in today's agenda and um, item number 3B. 3B is in boy. Yeah. Um, Item number three B, or actually, not item number C in today's agenda um, says, um, May I share screen? Sure, thank you. <clears throat> um, rather than reading it out to you, here it is. I don't think I'm able to share. That's all right. Uh, no, we. It, I'll, I'll I, just I, read it up. Yeah, proposed red line extension to free development project area TFIA wards 3, 4, 6, 9, 11, 3, 4, 6, 9, 10, 11, 16, 17, 20, 21, 25, 34, 42. RPA wards 3, 4, 11, 25, 42. So there is actually a lot more wards invo involved than the ones that Alderman Dow had earlier stated and I just don't understand enough about um, how that uh, how that works. Okay, uh, thank, thank you, Commissioner Chan McKibben. Presented to me, 
I, I'm sorry, uh, um, Alderman Dow, please. Proceed. Yeah, I, I mean, that was what was presented to me at the CTA briefing with the pin numbers and uh, number of pins and the amount of money that they thought would come from those four wards. So if there are more, I would like to hear that too. I can um, address that. Okay, Trevor. hold on, I'm sorry, please. Um, it, it, this, it's hard to manage all the comments during a virtual meeting. Uh, so I will um, get to the department uh, Tim Jeffries has raised his hand, and then I'll uh, refer back to the CTA. Um, I guess uh, you know, if there's if there is any legal questions, um, Scott Phelan from the Department of Law is here to answer any questions. Um, I he was previously needed to be promoted um, from attendee, but um, I guess I'll uh, um, Commissioner McKibben. I can answer your first question. There's there's the RPA and the TFIA. The RPA is the area of the TIF district that is generally generating the funds to be used, while the TFIA is the full length of the transit facility improvement area, which extends all the way from Madison down to 134th. So that area includes far more. Um, Alderman Dowell was correct in saying that the area of fund generation is limited to the districts that she mentioned, 3, 4, 11, 25, and 42. Um, and then I guess just generally, I, I, I totally agree with this, the, the, the idea that this is, that time is needed to digest this report. Um, and I, I guess I would just, you know, this is, that, that is sort of what this action is, what we're voting on. We are putting this document on file so that everyone does have the opportunity to review it. Um, you know, state law requires us to introduce this, something like 12 business days before CDC, which we did, we met that deadline. And then we give it to you guys to accept it so that you can, so that we can formally notice to the public that this document has, is accepted, it's filed, it's out there in the public so that everyone can review it. So that there's sort of a common set of expectations that people are reviewing against when we have that public meeting, which is the other part of the, what we're asking is to set that meeting for the future. So I, I guess it's, I understand that you got it just now and that you need time to review it. But I think that the business, the, the time that is is that is baked into the action that we're asking for today. We we just simply we do need to put it on file so that we can 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 start that process of of having a common framework for everyone to look at. Um, and that's that's that is what this action is. And if there's any questions about the like the legal um, framework behind that or what needs to happen, Scott Phelan from the law department is, is can confirm anything about that um, related to the TIF Act. Uh Thank you for those comments, Tim. I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Lee from the CTA. And then I see another hand has been raised. Hi, this is Leah Mooney from the CTA. I apologize for interrupting earlier. Um, I only wanted to uh, reiterate what Tim was saying about the wards and just clarify it's five wards that are in the RPA, as Tim said, um, 42, 4, 3, 11, and 25. And then, as he already said, there are more in the TFIA. Um, and I think our um, goal would be to provide any additional briefings or support as needed during the review period. Okay, thank you. Um, Alderman Dow, is your hand raised? Yes, Madam Chairman. I'm just uh, making a formal request here. This document that you received, the 161 page document, um, I'm requesting publicly that I receive a copy of that. And also on behalf of my colleagues who are affected by uh, this tip, that that document be distributed to them as well. Thank you. All right, um, you're welcome, Alderman Dow. We'll make sure that that happens. Uh, we have um, Fran Rood, is that how you pronounce your last name? I'm so sorry. Uh, from S.B. Friedman. <laughs> yes, that's correct, Madam Chairwoman. Thank you. Seems to be a tricky name. Um, I'm Fran Rood. Again, I'm a senior vice president with S.B. Friedman, and we are a TIF consultant working with CTA uh, on this designation. And I wanted to just add to what Tim Jeffries had said about the, the public process that's starting here. So 
As Tim noted, we are required by law to file the redevelopment plan 10 days before the date of the public hearing is set. And so that, that plan has been publicly filed uh, and is available for review. And then once this commission sets the date of the public hearing and sets the date of the joint review board meeting, which are you know, two of the actions that are requested today, we would then send notices to all of the residents within the redevelopment project area. So they'll receive another notice telling them that the plan is available for review. And we'll actually send the plan and the dates of the joint review board meeting uh, and the public hearing to the taxing districts that are impacted. So as Tim was saying, and Leah was saying earlier, this is really kicking off the public appro approval process and letting everyone know that that plan is available for review and for public comment um, as we proceed through the designation process. There will also be notices published in the newspaper uh, after this action is taken and before the CDC public hearing uh, as further notice of that hearing and, and the public's ability to comment there. So I just wanted to kind of clarify and provide that additional context um, so that the commission understands what else is coming. And it's really only after the public hearing that city council could even consider creating the transit TIF. I guess one other uh, note is that the, that plan does include the boundaries of the TFIA, the Transit Facility Improvement Area, and then also the Redevelopment Project Area or the RPA, which were those two different geographies um, that show up in the staff report. All right, thank you. Uh, it's very helpful. Um, we have a participant, Kamal, by Mr. Lou Turner, that has raised their hand. Can you um, allow Mr. Turner to speak? Yes, Mr. Turner, you can speak. You're, you're unmuted. Thank you very much. Um, I'm a professor of urban planning down here at the University of Illinois in Champaign, and I'm rather familiar with the Red Line extension and that I've worked on it for 20 years. Um, and the idea of the transitive, I think, is very important uh, for the planning commission to, um, to consider. And I think that the, um, the city has done a rather creative job in terms of its geographical designation for the TIF. Um, and I, I hope that the um, planning commission will, uh, will pass it. I think one thing to keep in mind is something of historical perspective as you read the, doc the, the document. And the historical perspective is that the TIF legislation, the TIF Act that came out of Springfield, which was, as you know, enabling legislation, was no sooner than it was passed than it was used. The transit TIF was uh, created on the north side of Chicago for the red purple modernization. Although the idea for a transit TIF came out of the work around the red line extension on the far south side of Chicago. And we're only now, I don't know what is what it is, five or six years later, coming around to ha having a transit TIF for the red line extension, although the idea originated on, on the south side of Chicago. So um, it's not exactly a, a race with time, but I hope that as the commissioners read it and all the various parties read the document, that they really consider uh, passing uh, this TIF to fund um, an historical uh, infrastructure project. The Red Line Extension is the largest infrastructure project being proposed to be built in any Black community in this country. And I think it would be um, really a shame to miss the opportunity when uh, everything is aligning in terms of funding and planning uh, to, uh, to actually realize uh, this major project for the far south side of Chicago in an area which I think, as you know, is a transportation desert. And it's a real opportunity for the city, particularly in a year when it's considering a new comprehensive plan to actually show that it is actually comprehensively planning for uh, all people in the city of Chicago. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Turner. Uh, Commissioner Thomas, I see you have your hand raised, but I have a couple of questions for the department and for the law department. Um, one question is, um, can we, I, I know uh, 
there's a resolution that's been proposed. Can the CDC set the dates for the public hearing of the Joint Review Board and a public hearing without ratifying the feasibility study? Um, I, I would ask uh, um, if, if Kamau or someone could um, elevate Scott Fainlin, who has his hand raised and among the attendees, I'll, I'll defer to him on that point. It's, this is really a legal question. All right, so Kamal, if you could uh, unmute Scott Phelan from the City of Chicago Law Department. I just promoted Mr. Phelan, he's joining. So um, Chair, the question is, could we delete the resolution that refers to the feasibility study but go ahead with the accept the plan and report for review and set the dates for the public hearing and then the JRB meeting? Yes. That is the question. Um, yeah, that would be preferable because it, well, that would be preferable to not acting at all today because then at least you could preserve the dates for those meetings. Um, so the, uh, the only thing I did want to point out is the feasibility study is, is actually only a few sentences in the plan. And that may be the source of some of the, the questions. Um, under the TIF Act, the feasibility study is, is simply a preliminary report to help the municipality to determine whether or not TIF financing is appropriate. Um, for redevelopment in the proposed area. Now, since this is a transit TIF, the only eligible costs are the transit facility, uh, the, sorry, the red line extension. And, and I'm sorry, I'm toggling back and forth between the screens. So in the plan uh, on page 27, the entire feasibility study is just a couple of sentences saying that the proposed redevelopment project area meets the eligibility criteria under the act. And those are basically, it's within a half a mile of either side of the red line. And then the red line project was described in the, in the TIF act. And that based on the increment projections, it appears there's enough money to support the, the, the budget. And so the use, the use of TIF would be appropriate for transit related improvements. That's it. That is the whole feasibility report. Again, the rest of the plan is simply being discussed and hasn't even been considered or approved by CDC yet. So that's that's all part of that public process and there'll be another resolution considering whether to approve the plan itself. So it's really just these few sentences that are the feasibility report at this time and that may not have been clear from the materials. Um, it, it wasn't clear, uh, at least to me, be, uh, from the materials. And so uh, Scott, we appreciate uh, you weighing in on this um, and at my request that the law department uh, help the CDC uh, kind of work through exactly uh, you know, what we're being asked to approve or not approve uh, and, and review or not or, or accept um, as a part of um, today's matter. Um, that's very helpful. Commissioner Thomas. Um, that, that is very helpful. Thank you, uh, Madam Chairman. Um, because the published agenda says that we are, that the uh, department is requesting authority to authorize and ratify. So we just say authority to authorize a feasibility study. That's one thing, but to authorize and ratify a feasibility study. That's the first part except for review the eligibility report and redevelopment plan, okay? We can accept today for review, but that's assuming, that actually assumes that there may be changes based on our review or updates to the, to the plan, the report and plan based on our review. Um, at least that's how it reads right now. And the, the biggest issue for me is rat, ratify a feasibility plan when we got this 
plan. It's 121 pages on Friday. Would, would it be helpful to just refer to authorize and then delete the reference to ratify to avoid that concern? Because you're saying, it, it, what is what I'm hearing you say that if the plan ends up going through changes based on the public hearing, joint review board process, et cetera, that we may end up with different language in the final plan. I mean, if, if I think deleting the reference to ratify would, would address that. So just leave it as authorizing the feasibility study. And except for review, the eligibility report, which I think is what we have and the redevelopment plan, yeah, the eligibility report is included within the redevelopment plan. If they had asked me to draft the TIF Act, I think it could have been done in a more clear fashion, but they didn't. So yes, the eligibility report is incorporated into the, the plan that you received. It, if, so if it would be helpful, maybe just referring to authorizing the feasibility study instead of ratifying it, if that's creating the concern. You know, I'm mindful of the, um, you know, any potential timelines. We've not had the department uh, speak about this that might, uh, in terms of other funding sources away from the TIF, that might be impacted, by, negatively impacted by the CDC's um, not taking action today uh, so that the date of the public hearing and the joint review board, the public meeting of the joint review board can be set. Right now it's set for October. Um, and so I'm just concerned that given kind of the things that have to fall into place, I, I would ask um, that the um, commission consider uh, this resolution uh, to um, approve um, the authority to authorize a feasibility study and accept for review the eligibility report and redevelopment plan for the proposed red line extension tax increment finance and redevelopment project area and set the dates for the public meeting of the joint review board and a public hearing. Um, what, I'm, what I'm hearing based on comments from the law department is that, that the, all interested parties will have an opportunity to review the redevelopment plan prior to the public meeting um, and you know at at which point uh, the public will be able to uh, make comments um, and I'm sure that others that are involved in this process to the extent they're given access to this redevelopment plan um, quickly uh, will be providing feedback both the department and the CTA on elements of the redevelopment plan. I would also think it might be helpful for the commission, and I don't know, you know, it, this has not happened since I've been on the board, but it, you know, given all of the um, very reasonable issues that were raised by uh, two of the aldermen who are impacted by, whose wards are impacted by uh, the uh, potential TIF financing, that the department, uh, the DPD uh, meet with the, um, commissioners, any, any commissioners that are interested in mass to walk us through and answer any questions we may have in advance of that public hearing. I think that would be very important uh, for, uh, to help the, the, the members of the commission understand uh, the issues in, in front of us. And I, I've not participated in a process like that since I've been on the commission, but I would ask that that be considered to the extent the, the uh, commission decides today to move forward with um, authorizing a feasibility study and accepting for review the eligibility report and redevelopment plan and then setting uh, those public meeting dates. Uh, Tim, Jeffrey from DPD, I'll give you the floor. I, I would, yeah, yes, this, this is likely one of the single largest items that will ever go to CDC as, and as the, the speaker previously said, this is one of the largest investments ever on the south side so um we we will make ourselves available not only for you but um you know alderman dowell i'm assuming you'll, you'll get a phone call from someone 
tomorrow from the CTA to discuss in depth and, and Alderman Gill. Likewise, I think we have, um, well, we'll, we are prepared to, to, to do whatever is necessary in this. So what I would suggest to uh, the Department of Planning and Development and the CTA is to the extent that the CDC uh, commissioners here decide to move forward uh, with the modified resolution that um, the CTA and the Department of Planning and Development not wait for the aldermen whose wards are affected to reach out to them, but to uh, you know, set up meetings after they've been given an opportunity to review the redevelopment plan. Um, Alderman Dow at least has not seen it because she's asked to see it. Um, so that, that you'd be uh, take um, basically an offensive move and, and set up meetings so that you can uh, discuss with the aldermen whose wards are affected uh, financially, you know, what the plans are and, and address any concerns or comments, questions they may have. Yeah, I think it would be very helpful to the process. Uh, in addition to, I will work with the Bob McKenna um, to do a, a poll of um, uh, the members of the commission to the extent the commission decides to move forward today um, and to schedule a date sometime in September in advance of that public hearing to um, you know, meet with members of the commission in a meeting, <laughs> not one-on-one, -on -one, and, and walk through uh, the redevelopment plan and answer any questions we may have. Uh, Commissioner Chan McKibben? Yeah, um, I know that uh, I had raised the question about language accessibility earlier, um, so um, please, um, if whatever you can do to make sure that Chinese and Spanish are available for any public engagement given that 11th and 25th wards are both um, well represented by Chinese speakers and Spanish speakers. Thanks. Okay, are there any questions or comments from members of the commission? I still have my quorum. So um, I'm, I'm going to modify the, um, in law, law department, I'm clear I can do this. I can modify the resolution um, from what was given to the commission. Um, so I will uh, request the commission's approval um, to authorize a feasibility study and accept for review the eligibility, el eligibility Ability report and redevelopment plan for the proposed red line extension tax increment financing redevelopment project area and set dates for a public meeting of the joint review board and a public hearing. Do I have a motion for that resolution? So move, Madam Chair. Thank you, Vice Chair Newsom. Do I have a second? Second by Trevino. Thank you. Commissioner Trevino. So I will now call the item for a vote. Vice Chair Newsom. Yes. Secretary Week. Secretary Buford. Excuse me, Commissioner Buford. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Cepeda, Commissioner Chan McKibben. Yes. Commissioner Cox, Commissioner Curtis, Commissioner Davis. Commissioner Gomez, Commissioner Griggs, Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Trevino. Yes. And Chair Butler votes yes. The motion passes. I really appreciate everyone's patience with this discussion, your willingness to uh, hang in there with us for a very long meeting, longer than usual of the commission. Um, I appreciate the CTAs and the department's flexibility um, and just encourage, um, I'll circle back to Bob so that he can pull the members of the commission so we can get our meeting date uh, to review in detail any questions we may have um, for the department and the CTA on the redevelopment project area. I would encourage, as I said earlier to uh, please reach out to um, the CTA and uh, DPD, reach out to the aldermen whose wards are affected uh, to meet with them um, way in advance of the public hearing so that you can 
um, make adjustments to the redevelopment plan as appropriate to address their very valid concerns. Uh, we wanna make sure um, that um, Southside residents have access to transportation um, in the same way that other parts of the city have access to transportation, anything that this commission can, can do to make that happen. Um, I know that's the will of the commission, but we also wanna make sure that we are all working towards the same goal and um, you know, our elected officials, those people who've been elected to represent uh, the people who live in the city are an, in an incredibly important part of the process and their um, concerns need to be addressed and dealt with um, as part of us moving forward. So with that, um, are there additional comments or questions? If not, I can I get a motion to um, adjourn the meeting? So move. All right, thank you. <laughs> Thanks everyone. <laughs> thank you. Bye. So I, I will look for the, uh, the language that you just mentioned. Just strike, yeah, I'll send it to you. Okay. All right. Thank you.